following is a Rogers Sports presentation. You could say it's been a good news, bad news weekend for the St. Michael's Majors. First, the good news, two straight victories, including an impressive 4-3 win over Kitchener Friday night and a drubbing of Don Cherry's Mississauga Ice Dogs yesterday. Now the bad news, Captain Mike Jefferson's four-game suspension has been extended to six. That means today the Majors try to keep their winning ways going without their captain as they take on the Kingston Frontenacs. Another great afternoon for OHL Hockey here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael's Majors Hockey. I'm your host today, Mike DeJong. Well, the Majors are definitely on quite a streak at the moment, coming off that big 5-3 win, 4-3 uh, win Friday night in Kitchener, and the big 6-1 win yesterday over Don Cherry's Mississauga Ice Dogs in front of over 8,300 fans here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Several reasons for this winning streak. Uh, the play of several players, including Kenny Karoop, uh, one of the reasons why the Majors have been playing so well lately, he's on a seven-game point-scoring streak. And, of course, the men in net, Dwayne Bateman, making 53 stops Friday night against Kitchener. And yesterday, Patrick DeVigi coming up with 28 saves against the Ice Dogs. Head coach Mike Fuda says goaltending has been the key. Ever since Bateman and DeVigi have arrived, they've, uh, they've really elevated the whole team's play. And as I said, it was just a matter of time, I think, before the team was... Uh, Rewarded for their good efforts, we went into Kitchener on uh, on Friday night, and uh, Bateman was the first star of the hockey game. The team battled hard; they held on. They overcame a 4,000 stuffed animal brigade tossed at the ice surface to hold on for a big road victory. And then, uh, to their credit, they carried it over, and Davigi came in and shut the door on Mississauga. And uh, felt the boys really worked hard yesterday, and once again, they were rewarded with two points. Oh, I don't, I mean, right now for us, like we're struggling at this time and, uh, you know, I think we got to come in and approach it like any other game. It's a road game and uh, they're one point behind us, so it's a, obviously a big game for us. And the Frontenacs are coming off a tough 4-2 loss on home ice last night to the Ottawa 67s, so you can expect them to be a little bus weary as well today. With more on today's matchup, let's go upstairs to our play-by-play -play team of Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Glenn, the Majors on a little bit of a roll coming into this afternoon's game. They've put together back-to-back -back wins for the first time this year. Wins over Kitchener and Mississauga. They're up against the Kings of Frontenac, a team they've had all sorts of trouble with over the last two years. They've actually lost their last seven straight to the Kingston Frontenacs, but they're catching the Frontenacs at a good time when you consider Kingston has lost four games coming in. Now, the Frontenacs are in a rebuilding phase. A big part of that rebuilding phase is Michael Zygamanis, their leading scorer. He's a 17-year-old, but an established player in his own right. Well, you're right about the leading scorer. He's a very diversified player, Tim. Uh, he's got 35 points so far this year, seventh in the league overall, and uh, here's a guy that they have to watch. Uh, I'm talking to Mike Fuda before the game. Uh, their concern is that every time that uh, Zygamanis steps into the Toronto building, he's always played the game of his life. So they'll be watching him closely today. And one of the anchors on the front Frontenac's blue line is the overager Aaron Franson. Aaron Franson, again, uh, big kid, six foot two, 210 pounds. Uh, tried out for the Capitals in 97, and he was here in Toronto trying out for the Maple Leafs in 98. So the Maple Leafs, I'm sure their staff will be in the, in the crowd today, see how he's coming along. Uh, leading scorer on the defensive side of things for Kingston. He's also got the, the number one power play goals for the team as well. Now the Majors will be without their captain Mike Jefferson for a couple more games. They've been without him for the last four games due to suspension. Requiring other players to step up. One of them, Kenny Karoop, is on a real tear. He has had, he's done a tremendous job at stepping up to the challenge of filling in those shoes for Mike Jefferson. Uh, Kenny Karoop, tremendous scoring streak with seven, seven, uh, seven games now. He's at two points a game. And uh, that's something you don't see all the time. So he's going to want to keep stepping up to the, uh, to the challenge of, of filling in for Mike Jefferson. Uh, you see more time now that Jefferson's out. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's coming off a back-to-back 
two goal games. So he scored two goals in Kitchener, and he scored two goals yesterday. I'm sure that uh, Mike Fuda and uh, the rest of the coaching staff wants to see him do it again. And Kenny Crew pretty much taking Jefferson's spot on the power play in recent games. Jason Cannon has taken Jefferson's spot on the top line with Sheldon Keefe and Ryan Barnes, and he's filled in very well as well. V very well indeed. He's uh, He's got a lot more ice time now uh, working with Barnes and, and Sheldon Keefe. He's getting the puck a lot more, playing with a lot more confidence than he did earlier on in the season. And uh, he's had five points in the last four games himself, so uh, both of these uh, young players are not immune to point getting, that's for sure. Okay, the Majors and the Kingston Frontenacs coming up here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Thanks very much, guys. And you might want to keep an eye on Michael Zigamanis, the Scarborough native today for the Kingston Frontenacs. As the boys mentioned, he is their leading scorer, but he's also playing with a cast on his right hand after breaking a bone in his hand several weeks back. In fact, it came the game after they played here at Maple Leaf Gardens against the uh, St. Michael's Majors. So Zigamanis might be hampered by that a little bit, although it doesn't really look like it. He's got 35 points so far in 22 games. He is far and away the best player on this Frontenacs team. Another player to watch is Matt Elich. We'll have him in our first intermission. He is also a defenseman. They are led by a couple of defensemen along with Zygamanis. As Tim and Glenn mentioned, Mike Oliveira, another forward, but Aaron Franson and Matt Elich, two uh, rear guards that are, that are well in, uh, among the team leaders in scoring. And in case you missed it yesterday, a nice plug by Don Cherry on Hockey Night in Canada last night for the Rose Cherry Foundation. They raised $7,500 here yesterday as the Ice Dogs plays the Majors. So it was, uh, it was quite, a, quite a foundation or quite a day for the Rose Cherry Foundation. We're all ready for the Kingston Frontenacs and St. Michael's Majors here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Let's go upstairs to Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe. Thanks, Mike, and we're underway here at Maple Leaf Gardens as the Majors dump it into the Kingston zone. We've played 24 seconds here in the first period. Majors starting with their checking line of Brian Simpson, Ryan Walsh, and Matt Ellis, and that's because they're up against the number one line for the Frontenacs, Michael Zygamanis between Jonathan Schill and Mike Oliveira. Play whistle down in the neutral zone. Let's take a look at the scratches for this afternoon's game. George Nistis and Mike Jefferson, a couple of key scratches for the Majors. Jefferson's uh, sitting out the fifth of a six-game suspension for the Sault Ste. Marie brawl. Phil Blackos is healthy, and Mike lacey has been out all year. Nistis with the ankle injury. Glenn, that's a key scratch for the front next. Kevin Grimes, the Colorado Avalanche first-rounder, he's been out for about a month with an abdominal situation. And Morgan McCormick, the rookie, has been out a while as well. Walker McDonald, 19-year-old veteran, he was suspended. Uh, he's really banged up. He's, he's just kind of sitting this game out, taking a rest today. Well, an abdominal pull is very serious, uh, something that I suffered back in the days when I played hockey, and it uh, it takes quite a while to uh, to heal oneself when, uh, when you got an abdominal pull because there's a lot of other muscles that are leaked to that. So the Majors missing a couple of key players in Mike Jefferson and George Nistis, and the Frontenac's defense will miss. Kevin Grimes and Walker McDonald, a pretty good player in his own right as well, a, a good, tough veteran forward. Majors, Sheldon Keefe turning and shooting. Shot hits the side of the net. There's Jason Cannon moving it for Ryan Barnes. Barnes working along the boards. Here is the Majors' number one line, Cannon, Barnes, and Keefe. And as we discussed in the outset, Cannon has filled in very well for Mike Jefferson on this top line. The Quinty connection. So it's the Quinty connection plus Jason Cannon now. Aaron Franson for the front next. Franson moves it to center. Franson to the line. Here's Franson working to the net. Nice shot, and Dwayne Bateman will make his first save of the game. Quick shot by the Kingston uh, player. Testing uh, Bateman real early in the game. It's the only shot we've had so far this game. And, uh, one of the things that you'll notice uh, Bateman does quite a bit is Likes to skate around the net. Uh, we've seen that uh, in his uh, uh, his games that he's played so far here at Maple Leaf Gardens. He he's likes to keep uh, keep moving, as they might say. He is a wandering goalie, and I noticed Patrick Abiji yesterday afternoon against the Mississauga Ice Dogs was doing the same thing. I, I wonder is he mimicking Bateman, or just a coincidence that the, the Majors have two of these wandering type goalies. But watch Bateman this afternoon. Whenever the uh, whistle goes, he goes for a skate. Yeah, that's it. And they keep him loose, keep him limber, and keeps him uh, in the game. Majors win the draw, puck in the corner as four or five of them bump along the boards. Kenny Karoop on the ice for the Majors, along with Brock Boucher and Jason Pinizzato, the Majors' number two line. Kept into the line by Aaron Franson, sends it deep, puck back of the net for DJ Miracle. Miracle stood up by Mark Hines. Chris Boucher has his man covered back of the net. Karoop trying to work it loose, and Kenny Karoop will dig it out and send it ahead for number 26, Jason Pinizzato. 
Puck clear to the open wing. Aaron Franson for the front next, and he sends it right back into Toronto territory. Bateman is signaling icing. Mark Hines will touch. We've played two minutes and 16 seconds. No score. We had a uh, great day here yesterday, Tim. We had 8,300 fans or better. Uh, and we were able to present a check as, uh, as we're talking about uh, to Don Cherry. Look at a picture of Mark Hines there. He's, uh, he's been playing very well this year. He's getting a lot more ice time as the, as the season's progressing. And the, uh, the coaching staff's feeling a lot more confident in his ability. Mark Hines, one of the few 19-year-olds in the Majors lineup. Mark Hines, Brock Boucher, and the other goalie, Patrick DeVigi. And that's typical of a second-year team. What they lack are the fully developed 19-year-olds. They had to get Hines and Boucher and DeVigi in trades. And that uh, ties in with a three-year cycle that Don Cherry likes to talk about in terms of developing a team. It's not until that third year that you have the nice even mix of 17s and 18s and 19s that you've developed. And again, you know, the, the uh, St. Mike's Majors, they're in their second year, so uh, I think that they would uh, try to expect the same thing for the next year. Yeah, the Majors are, are led by 18-year-olds primarily being a second-year team. Here's the front next driving it into Toronto territory. Michael Lavera takes a hit from Mark Popovic, but play whistled down. The referee, Mark Hicks, has signaled a hooking penalty. So we will have our first power play of the game, Glenn. Yeah, I'm not sure where the, uh, where the actual incident took place. Uh, it's a holding penalty he's called. Uh, looks like it's going to Mark Popovic. So Mark Popovic's going to be out for a couple of minutes while uh, Kingston tries to take good use of Zygamanis and uh, pop one in on a power play. Major's penalty killing is eighth in the league, 76.7% ratio. On the flip side of that, uh, the Majors are number two in the league in, in power play. When they get the opportunity for the power play, they usually score on it, Tim. Well, the power play has been carrying the Majors to a large degree this year. They connected for three power play goals against Mississauga yesterday afternoon. They had two in uh, Kitchener, so the power play has been instrumental in their last two wins. Kicks and Frontenac over the power play with Mark Popovic off at 2.41. Michael Zygamanis, Michael Lavera, Matt Elich, Aaron Franson, and Jonathan Schill, the power play in it. Schill lets it go from the left point. Hard shot, just wide. Players bump along the boards. Franson will glove it down to the line, but unable to keep it in, and he will send it back on the offside. Majors on the penalty kill. Let's see they have out there. They have the veteran Mark Hines. They have Sean Cation, who's very good with the puck, and Ryan Barnes and Sheldon Keefe up front. So take a look at that major power play unit. They have three guys that are penalty killing unit. They have three guys, Cation, Keefe, and Barnes, that handle the puck very well, so there is some uh, offensive potential. And worth pointing out, the Majors have scored a shorthanded goal in each of their last two games. And Keefe, uh, instrumental in scoring those goals. He scored a beautiful one yesterday against Mississauga, and he's always a danger whenever he's on the ice, regardless of how many players are out there with him. Sheldon Keefe with 19 goals in 21 games coming into this game. If he scores this afternoon, he will become the third player to reach 20 goals in the Majors' two-year history. Here's Aaron Franson keeping it at the point for the front next. 134 remaining on the power play, but Jonathan Schill unable to contain it on the left point. So the faceoff will come outside the Toronto Blue Line, 130 remaining in that power play. Glenn uh, talking about Sheldon Keefe and his 19 goals. Majors had two players that hit the 20 goal mark last year. Steve Zorick, captain of the team with 34 goals and Anthony Turzo managed a dead even 20, but Sheldon Keefe easily on pace to break Steve Zorick's 34 goal mark. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's all a matter of uh, Sheldon Keefe staying healthy over the season and uh, continue to play the, the fashion that he has already. Now here's a guy where uh, we're talking about uh, Sheldon Keefe. He leads the OHL in power play goals with 12. Tied, and tied fourth in the OHL for points overall with 36, and here's, he's a rookie. I mean, a lot of people are, are, are not remembering the fact that he is a rookie. Uh, it's his first season here in the OHL, and he's, uh, he's lighting it on fire. Play whistle down again, 123 remaining in the Mark Popovic penalty. As the Frontenacs are having trouble moving this puck over the blue line, the faceoff will be just inside the red line on the Majors' side of center. Kings of Frontenacs, this team very clearly in a rebuilding phase. They've made a, a couple of moves recently, trading the veteran Jan Solch to Owen Sound for the 17-year-old Ryan Rivard and Larry Mavity, the general manager and head coach, realizes uh, it's the, the future is now, or, or the, the time to rebuild is now. They lost a lot of top players last year, so their priority now is to develop the 17s and 18s. Absolutely. Puck to the Majors, blue line, bouncing puck, and Chris Cavill will send it deep into Kingston territory. Curtis Cruikshank, long lead pass for Matt Elich. Matt Elich, number 24, nice pass for Zygamanis. Here's Zygamanis over the line, wrist shot, and that whistles high and wide. Kept into the right point. 
Now the majors clear it down the ice. 48 seconds remaining in the power play. Brookshank back of the net doing a little bit of stick handling. Leaves it for Brett Ormond. Ormond, one of the new young players. They've worked in the lineup, number 20 with a puck. Got him about a month ago from the Peterborough Peets. Puck rolls into Toronto territory. Sean Cation gets to it first. So this Frontenac's power play, nothing like it was last year. Last year, the Kingston Frontenac's were just a, an offensive machine. Absolutely. But Absolutely. The, uh, the penalty killing of the majors today is, uh, is uh, doing very well. They're, they're not letting uh, Kingston even get a shot on net. Kenny Karoop dumps it into the near corner. Aaron Franson will take it. Here's Franson starting out. Franson, left wing, pass does not work. Intercepted by Brock Boucher. And now Karoop to the loose puck. Karoop to the net, has some room, but coming back in the play was Aaron Franson to take Karoop out of the play. Franson has Karoop pinned against the boards, and that will force a whistle. The majors have indeed killed the power play. We've played four minutes and 53 seconds here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Majors and the front backs are scoreless. I was speaking yesterday as we were watching the Mississauga game. I was sitting with Mark Napier. We were talking about Kenny Group and how much more confidence he has this year uh, in, in, in the fact that he's, he's very good with the puck, much better on his feet, although that doesn't uh, that, that replay doesn't indicate that. Watch how quickly he gets up and gains control of the puck again here. And that, 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 that is a, a hockey player that wants the puck more than the other guy when they get up that fast and they gain, they gain their composure and make things happen. Well, Kenny Group, an 18-year-old, second year in the league, as the Majors win the draw, and there's a hard shot from the point that hit the side of the net, hit the side of the left post. Brock Boucher back to the point. Here's Chris Boucher keeping it in. Boucher back of the net. Both Bouchers are on the ice. That's Brock number 19 and younger brother Chris, number 10, on the left defense. Karoop, Brock Boucher, and Jason Pinizzato, the line for the Majors. DJ Miracle takes the hit from Pinizzato. Brock Boucher back of the net, centering, didn't work now at the point. Rasmussen lets go, deflected high and wide as Ryan Rasmussen with uh, some good mustard on that shot. Yes, and some uh, good pressure by the Majors here in the first period. Uh, interesting, we, we see the shots uh, so soon at, at two to one um, for, the, for the Majors. Every single game this year, I think with the exception of two, Tim, the Majors have outshot their, their opponents. We looked at yesterday, they significantly outshot the Mississauga Ice Dogs, 68 to 27. And whenever you shoot a team, that always puts you in a, in a position of strength in terms of uh, scoring goals and, and maybe winning the game. This is like Ice Dogs in here for their first visit to Maple Leaf Gardens yesterday afternoon. 8,400 roughly in attendance for the game in eight of the Rose Cherry home. There's Popovic letting it go, and Curtis Cruikshank will hang on to that. 14:31, the time remaining in the first period. But Don Cherry was here in all his tartan splendor, participating in the <laughs> pregame ceremony. Uh, sat beside us in the fan broadcast booth during the game. Absolutely. Uh, big uh, big presentation to the Rose Cherry Foundation for a check for $7,500. Uh, like to take the opportunity now to thank the Fan 590 Molson's Cot Cot Corporation and uh, and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors for making it all happen. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great promotion and a great afternoon of junior hockey. Now the Ice Dogs on the short end of the score, but you know the dogs, it's a, it's a slow process or an expansion team as Dwayne Bateman covers up side of the net. The dogs, a typical expansion team, they have 14 rookies, just a whole host of 17-year-olds. They, they have 10 players they drafted in the priority draft that made the lineup. They have the, the core of 19-year-old veterans, but the veterans are expansion draft pickups, players that were deemed expendable by other teams. So it's going to be a rough ride for the dogs this year, but next year those 17-year-olds will be 18-year-olds and that much that much better. Like Kenny Karuba is a classic example, uh, really just finding his way in the OHL last year. Had a few little flashes of brilliance here and there, but now as an 18-year-old, he, he's developed into a very consistent OHL player. And that's all it is. It's, 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 it's the maturity level of these young players as they come along and get more ice time. And that's the difference in the majors this year, the quality of their 18-year-olds. There's a shot right on as Dwayne Bateman will steer it aside. Zygamandis in the corner. Now the majors take it right wing. Branson under pressure from Ryan Walsh. Leaves it for Sean Griffin, and Griffin will move it to center. Loose puck at center, Matt Price. Pinned along the boards by Gerald Moriarty. Now Sean Cation for Toronto. Cation lead pass for Sheldon Keefe. Here's Keefe shooting just wide on the short side. Ryan Barnes follows up. Barnes cycles low for number three, Jason Cannon. Gerald Moriarty quickly in for the point. Moriarty's showing some good hustle along the boards. 
as the Frontenacs clear the zone, but bouncing into Toronto territory. John Cation, left wing for Cannon. Matt Elich, cross ice. Brett Ormond, lead pass. Andrew Ryan Arrow unable to handle that as the front axe dump it back into Toronto territory. Matt Elich with a good head of speed, and Elich putting the body to Sean Cation, but Cation able to avoid most of that crunching hit. Very good job at avoiding the hit there. He saw it coming. Right wing for Matt Elich. Elich has wheels. Elich winding up and Bateman the save. Gerald Moriarty banking it off the boards. Kept in at the left point. That's number 16, Brett Cluche. Cluche working against Sheldon Keefe. Cluche. And Andrew Ionero, the two rookies for the front knacks, as the puck comes out over the blue line and back into Kingston territory for Eric Kraft. Eric Kraft, the red line, long shooting high and off the glass. Here's Ryan Rasmussen. Rasmussen under pressure. Front next, putting a bit of pressure on here, but the Majors gathered up left wing and Brock Boucher. Pass too far for Pinizzato. Puck loose at center as Brett Cluche will send it into Toronto territory with the score, no score. This is St. Michael's Hockey. It's time to play game that two. Daryl Thompson will step in against Kenny Karoop on the faceoff. And Karoop will force it forward. No score. The Kingston Frontenacs and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Tim Hoffey along with Glenn Lowe's. Bouncing puck at center. Aaron Franson, a lead pass. And here come the Frontenacs. Daryl Thompson shooting high shot. And Dwayne Bateman will take that in the chest. And there goes Dwayne for one of his little skates. Yeah, it keeps him going. He's, uh, he's, he's a pretty flashy goaltender. And... Uh, you know, I know that they're very happy to have him here in, in Toronto. Um, him and Davidia are going to share the spot this year. And uh, Bateman, is, he's, he's a character. There's no doubt about it. I think he skates more in a game than Jeff Kugel does in a game of the Windsor Spitfires. <laughs> or, did, or did skate or did, in a game yeah, of the Windsor Spitfires. two or three shifts. I think Bateman does more skating. Yeah. This following Friday, uh, this coming Friday, is actually the, uh, the, uh, the appeal hearing on Jeff Kugel's suspension for the lifetime ban. Well, the Board of Governors are reviewing that situation as Franson lets it go and pad save by Dwayne Bateman. Puck in the major zone. Ryan Rasmussen hustles back for it. That's big number 16. Brett Cluche there, first round draft pick this year, working against Ryan Rasmussen. Now puck along the boards to the side of the net. Loose puck in front for the majors. Brock Boucher will take it. And Boucher with a lead pass for Kenny Carew. Sean Griffin passed an open wing. Zygamandis was just coming off the bench, got caught up with a referee momentarily. Now the puck into the Kingston zone, play whistle down, and let's see what Mark Hicks is going to call here. Well, looks like it's gonna be a Kingston penalty. Uh... Kenny Karuk gonna head off the ice for a breather. I'm sure we'll see him before the uh, power plays out. And, uh... Ryan Barnes, Sheldon Keith are going to be instrumental in put, trying to put the puck in that the first power play here for the Toronto St. Michaels Majors. So we'll get a look at this number two ranked Toronto power play. Takes the penalty killing 14th in the Ontario Hockey League, 75.0%. And the Majors power play very, very potent, and it has been clicking. Three goals against Mississauga, two against Kitchener. Both victories, the power play, doing a great job for the majors in recent games. This power play, number two in the league, behind only Plymouth, 31.9%. Yeah. So Clucci is off for elbowing. Majors in the front backs are scoreless. Sean Cation will try and get this Initial power play rush going, but Jonathan Schill doing a great job of forechecking. Sheldon Keefe will try it, but he's got a man on him as well. It's Michael Zygamanis, and Zygamanis manages the steal, and we have a penalty. It Zygamanis. Looks, Zygaman for well, tripping. Yeah, it's a trip. Yeah, he, uh -oh. he tripped up uh, Keefe in the corner there. Well, we were giving the front next credit for the aggressive forecheck, but it's backfired on them. Zygamanis, their top player, going to the penalty box, so... The aggressiveness costing them. The Majors will have a two-man advantage for a minute and 33 seconds. Mark Osborne back of the Majors bench. The assistant coach, former Toronto Maple Leaf. Played for Majors president Reg Quinn in his junior days with North Bay and renewing that connection with Reg Quinn here with the Majors. So Michael Zygamanis from Scarborough off for tripping and we know Michael Zygamanis will be in the CHL Prospects game this year at Maple Leaf Gardens. 
I know that uh, Larry Mavity's going to want to see him on the ice more than he's going to want to see him in the penalty box today, that's for sure. Well, that, must, that situation would just drive uh, Larry Mavity or any coach crazy here. Sure, you want your guys checking aggressively on the penalty kill, but not to that extent. Nine seventeen, the time of the penalty to Zigamanis Majors with a two-man advantage, and Sheldon Keith drags it over the line into the corner. Ryan Barnes gets to it. Barnes for Kenny Karoop at the point. Pavlovic, let's go. Pavlovic shot deflected in front, and Curtis Crookshank will hang on. Smart idea for Crookshank to hold on to that puck with uh, Sheldon Keith and Ryan Barnes swimming around the net. 111 remaining in the two-man advantage. Curtis Crookshank will be put to the test here. The fourth round draft selection of the Washington Capitals. He's a veteran goaltender. He's a tall goaltender too. He's six foot two. 19-year-old veteran from Ottawa in his final year of junior eligibility. Huck in the Kingston zone, they win the draw. Sean Griffin rings it around to the boards, kept into the right point by Popovic. Huck along the boards, Kenny Karoop, Griffin, Elich, and Schill, the penalty killers. Here's Popovic to Karoop, back to Popovic, finds Kation. Kation fakes, now gives it to Sheldon Keefe. Sheldon Keefe back to Kation. Kation, there's a shot, score! Sean Kation lets it go, and the Majors are on the board. They lead it, one nothing. Well, that was a beautiful shot from Sean Cation. He found the sweet spot on the stick. And uh, here we see a lot of patience. Sheldon Keefe holding on the puck. Sean Cation, lots of time to wind up. And as I said, hit the sweet spot. And he put it right past Crookshank. The uh, toughest spot for a goaltender to stop a puck is the lower blocker side. Nice goal by Sean Cation, his fourth goal of the year. Played for the Caledon Canadians last year. 18-year-old rookie OHL defenseman. We talked about how uh, how effective the power play is for the majors, and uh, here they still have another minute and 14 seconds with uh, with an extra man. Here's Cation bringing it back for the majors, still on the power play. 105 remaining in the Zigamanis penalty. Cannon at the point. Here's Cation for Jason Pinizzato. Pinizzato and Cation moving it around very crisply. Now Brock Boucher. Boucher along the boards. Boucher shoots deflected high and wide. And Matt Elich will take it for the front axe and skate it out to the blue line. Matt Elich, good puck handler, good skater. Matt Elich into Toronto territory. Drags it around. Cation backhand shot off the side of the net. Watch Matt Elich. He is one of the smoothest players in the Ontario Hockey League. Mike Oliveira with some moves himself. Stepping it around Brock Boucher. And now Jason Cannon will take it for Toronto. Here's Cannon. Lead pass for Sheldon Keefe. Keefe to the line. Keefe winds up high. Rising shot off the glass. Keefe quickly to the rebound. Keefe and Barnes along the boards. 14 seconds remaining in the power play as the Majors try and get it set up. Puck at the point. Here's Jason Cannon. Cannon, wrist shot. Knocked down in front by Aaron Franson. And Franson will wrist it down the ice. Power play is over as Michael Zygamanis returns to the ice. Ryan Barnes for Toronto. Pass didn't work here. Zygamanis intercepting. Zygamanis shoots. And that was a dangerous looking wrist shot as Zygamanis took his time. Yeah, a bit of confusion in the majors there. Who wanted the puck? I don't think they uh, took into account that Zygamanis was there. There's Sheldon Keefe shooting. And nice save by Curtis Crookshank as again we see Sheldon Keefe with that quick move to the slot and the quick release. Just natural goal scoring instincts on the part of Sheldon Keefe. It's plays like that that have earned him 19 goals this year. Absolutely. He's, uh, he's very, very uh, smooth, and he has a lot of good composure on the ice. And if you use such a word as grace, he's got a lot of grace when he's out on the ice, Tim. Curtis Crookshank will cover up with eight minutes to go here in the first period. And Sheldon Keith just finds a way to get into those holes, finds a way to get to the opening, and then with that very quick release, as soon as he sees the shot, he lets it go. He's got all the natural scoring instincts. And, he, and, and, and though he's a smaller player, he does take advantage of his size. When he's in front of the net, uh, he's very tough to mark. Try to pin him down in, in front of that because he moves around so quickly, and uh, he is a smaller player, gets underneath the bigger guys. Sheldon Keefe and Mark Popovic assisting on the power play goal by Sean Cation, his fourth of the year. So Keefe will extend his point scoring streak to five games, which is modest by his standards. He's almost sure for a point a game. 
Here's Chris Cava batting it down to the blue line. Cava takes the hit. Puck along the boards. Penizano digging for it. Cava, DJ Miracle. Big number 19, Daryl Thompson as well. Puck squirts loose. And Brett Kluche will move it to center. Kluche chasing Mark Popovic, the two first-round picks. Popovic back of the net. Popovic sends it around for Brock Boucher. Boucher, lead pass, bouncing puck. Keefe is skating for it, but Sean Griffin is there first. Puck into Kingston territory. Majors on a full line change. Suck! Cannon is on the ice for Toronto, along with Ryan Barnes and Sheldon Keefe. Here's Cannon. Barnes, side of the net. Barnes shooting. A nice save by Crookshank. Cannon after the rebound. Denied by Crookshank. Cannon in the corner. Keefe in front. Cycles it low. Ryan Barnes back of the net. Barnes fighting with Sean Griffin. Barnes and Keefe are both back there. Sheldon Keefe always around the puck as Keefe tied up by Daryl Thompson. And they'll get a whistle with 6.52 to play. Very, uh, very uh, dangerous play there by the uh, Kingston Frontenacs, leaving the puck for uh, for Ryan Barnes and Sheldon Keefe to play with because the two of those guys are very dangerous. They're dangerous on their own. You put them together, they, are, they can be disastrous to any team. Here we see Ryan Barnes. Can't get it the first time, and there we see Jason Cannon going in for another another scoop, but uh, Chris Crookshank real quick, real quick with a toe, preventing that puck from going in. Another look at it here. Ryan Barnes going for the short side. Jason Cannon, again, beautiful save by Crookshank. Good reflexes from Crookshank, and uh, it could have been 2 nothing real quick. That, that's excellent goaltending. He, he had that area covered that he needed. Sean Cation from the point, bouncing puck, loose puck, shot, it's, where is it? There it is, popped out. Jeez, every, everybody was taking a crack up. at it there. Everybody wanted, everybody wanted a crack at the puck there. Boy, it looked like every player on the ice had converged on the puck at one point. <laughs> Cation put the shot to the net, and then chaos broke out. Here's Brian Simpson, lead pass in the right wing. Too far for Matt Ellis. Puck loose at center, Cation gets to it. Now here's Matt Ellis. Matt Ellis, third game back from Mono. Hard shot, and Curtis Crookshank will apply the glove. We'll take a break with the Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs by a score of 1-0. All right, we're back. We never really left. Matt Ellis for the <laughs> St. Michael's Majors. I'm, I know he's very happy to be back in this lineup. That uh, nagging mononucleosis that he had was just, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's frustrating both uh, physically but mentally when your teammates are out there and uh, you, know you, you, you know you can contribute but you can't. Um, it's, it's not a great feeling, but uh, he's coming into his own now. He's been in the, he's been a few games now with the, uh, with the Majors and uh, he's excited to be back. Played the first game of the year against Ottawa here at the Gardens and then missed 19 straight with the mono. You can make that. He's, he's played the last, this is his third game back. He actually dressed for the previous two but never got off the bench. We will take a break now. We're going to go downstairs to Mike Dijon. Thanks very much, guys. The Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs 1-0 midway through the first period on a goal by Sean Cation. His fourth of the year, a power play effort from Keefe and Popovic. Coming up in the first intermission, our guest will be Matt Elich. He's uh, the, a right winger, a third round draft pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning, the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning in 1997. He's one of the uh, leading scorers of the Kingston Front Knacks. We'll also have some news and views from around the league. We'll do an update on several players and several games as well. We'll have a, an analysis of the first period with Tim and Glenn from upstairs. Coming up, our next game, or the next game on CTV Sportsnet, will be a Quebec League game between Rowan Noranda and Acadia Bathurst. That's coming up 7 p.m. tonight on CTV Sportsnet. The Majors are leading Kingston 1 0 with time ticking down in the opening 20 minutes. Let's go back upstairs to Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Chatting with uh, Nick Kiprios yesterday. Glenn, uh, Nick does the the color on the CTV Sportsnet games for the OHL. Does the NHL work as well? Uh, they've got Sault Ste. Marie Kitchener, an OHL game, a week Sunday. Yeah, Nick, Nick, interference. Sorry. Oh, oh, no, no. I was just going to say, uh, Nick, Nick and I go back to, uh, to junior days when we knew each other. He's playing from North Bay, and I was in Toronto, and uh, we tussled a couple times ourselves, and he's, no, he's not a, uh, he's no slight, that's for sure. He's a uh, very, uh, very tough guy, and, uh, uh, him and I got to know each other over the years, and I saw him uh, most recently, actually a couple weeks ago, here at the, here at the Gardens, watching the Majors play, taking some notes. And he's uh, 
He's, uh, he's happy in his new position, that's for sure. Well, Gerald Moriarty is off for interference. Branson with a high shot, and Wayne Bateman will apply the glove. 120 remaining in this Kingston power play, and 526 remaining in the first period. And Nick Kiprios, as you mentioned, had a fine OHL career with the North Bay Centennials and uh, just recently retired from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here's the, uh, the shot. Bateman the save. We see the bouncing puck, the loose puck, and close in chance by, looks like, Matt Price. Now the shot from the point. There's a player you can't see on the screen right now. Right in behind, defenseman Sean Cation. He's over uh, to the to the right of your screen. He's open. Uh, he's open there, and, and, and he was slamming a stick down, looking for the defenseman to pass him the puck. And uh, I think it would have been a goal there if the defenseman had a heads up and uh, and slid it over to him. But fortunately for the majors, that didn't happen. And uh, we got a face off outside of uh, outside of Bateman there. Well, Kingston is in the offensive powerhouse it was last year, but there are still remnants of that team. Zygmanis, Matt Elich, Mike Oliveira. Three very talented shooters on this team, and some of the younger guys have brought in Brett Cluche and Daryl Thompson. To name a couple, have some pop as well. Here's Aaron Franson, who can generate some offense with the blue line, just barely got around Kenny Karoop. Now Michael Zygamanis. Zygamanis loses it. Ryan Walsh for Cava, and Cava will send the bouncing puck down into Kingston territory. 46 seconds remaining in the Kingston power play. Right next on the power play for the second time in this game. Aaron Franson uh, picking up the puck there. He's uh, number one goal scorer for uh, number one power play goal scorer for the front next with seven this year so far. Here's Sigamanis right wing for Oliveira. Oliveira and Cava bumping along the boards. Down goes Cava. Puck kept in at the left point. Right Ormon keeping it in, but Jason Cannon will intercept and Cava will lead the Cannon rather will lead the rush to center. Cannon winding up a cannon of a shot, and Curtis Crookshank makes the save. Now I don't say that very often. No, you, you don't. I'll we'll save that for when it applies. It's it's, it's easy to <laughs> overuse that, but but uh, Cannon really did let it go there. There's Jonathan Shell bumping with Popovic as the power play is over. Gerald Moriarty skating to the Majors bench. Loose puck at center, and Brett Ormond will take it for Kingston. Ormond for Zygamanis, comes back into his own zone. Brock Boucher was chasing him. Zygamanis very smooth, leading the rush, but not so smooth coming to the line as the Brunax called him the offside, and Matt Elitz is a little upset with himself on that. Yeah. Little, uh, little, um, little hasty to get there. Uh, Zygamanis, uh, great hockey player, very smooth, and uh, you know, Matt Elitz is just, uh, just a little bit uh, anxious getting on the line. Matt Elitch, as we heard, the overager will be Mike DeJong's first intermission guest. He's from Gross Point, Michigan, Matt Elitch. DJ Merrick, one of three players involved in the big penalty box brawl against the London Knights. He was suspended, as was Brett Cloutier and Walker McDonald, who is not playing this afternoon. The suspensions have all finished, but Walker McDonald, combination of the suspension, and a little banged up. He is resting for this afternoon's game. Larry Mavity also got a uh, two-game suspension as a result of that brawl because of a comment from the players' bench to enter the fracas. Here's a shot score! Mark Pavlovic left point, and the Majors go in front by a score of two to nothing. Beautiful goal by Mark Pavlovic. Uh, the defensemen are leading the way here today, uh, Tim, with uh, both uh, both goals coming from defensemen. Pavlovic uh, this year, beautiful, beautiful goal by uh, by Mark. Mark's second, second goal, goal of the year. Assuming he gets it, I think he did. It looked like a clean shot. Yeah. There was traffic. Great job, Brock Boucher taking out the defenseman in the corner. Freeing up the puck. And a big wind up. And that just, uh, that went in all on its own. Sweet, sweet goal by uh, Mark Popovic. Uh, a little screen in front there. We got to give credit to Brock Boucher. Big Brock Boucher screening uh, Crookshank to, uh, to a degree. Mark Popovic's second OHL goal scored his first. Friday night in Kitchener, so two goals in three games for Mark Popovic. And the Majors going front 2 0, being led by the offensive guns in the blue line, Sean Keishan and Mark Popovic. Bouncing puck into Toronto territory. Dwayne Bateman will leave it for Ryan Rasmussen. Rasmussen starting out left side for Brock Boucher. Aaron Franson trying to keep it in the line. Puck now into Kingston territory where Brett Boucher sends it across for number five, Sean Griffin. Here's Griffin to the red line, sending it deep into Toronto territory. Puck into the corner. Brock Boucher is there. Boucher takes the hit. Down goes the Kingston player. There will be a major penalty. Open net for Cloutier. Shoot scores! Brett 
Oche on the delayed penalty call. Bateman made the initial save, but he was at Cloutier's mercy on the rebound. Yeah, Cloutier did a good job of holding on to the puck. I think he initially wanted to just slam it in the net when he first got it. And uh, having a look at, uh, at Bateman uh, sprawling across the net took his time. Here we see the, uh, the end of the goal here. Bateman sprawling across, but a great job by Cloutier on, on, uh, on patience with the puck. Cloutier's uh, second goal as well this year. Give him a total of six points for the, uh, for the season so far. Right, Cloutier, they have big hopes for this guy. 13th overall first round selection from Arn Pryor. Played Canada Valley Tier 2, and he's got that NHL size, 6'3", 211. So the Kings of Frontenacs on a delayed penalty call. The majors were about to be assessed a penalty, but the penalty has been wiped out as a result of the goal by Brett Cloutier. Brent Ormond drawing the assist at 17-22, and the Kingston Front Axe are right back in this hockey game. Puck loose just outside the Majors' blue line. The Front Axe gets with Matt Price. Matt Price will fire it in. Puck along the far boards, kept into the line, not kept in, though. That Brent Ormond almost had it. Now he sends a cross ice for Eric Braff. Braff steps over the red line, fires it deep. Bateman unable to stop it. Back of the net, Sean Cation for Toronto. Haitian under pressure, takes the hit from Matt Price. Now here's Jason Cannon. Cannon will turn, he's good on the skates, Jason Cannon. Cannon under a, a bit of pressure deep from Andrew Ionero. Ryan Barnes is back. Major's a little bottled up. Now they get it out as Cannon will take it and send it to center for Sheldon Keith. Keith, long shot, handled easily by Curtis Crookshank. And Crookshank will leave it for Brett Ormond. Ormond, right side for Eric Brown. Here's Braff over the line. Hard shot steered aside by Dwayne Bateman. Chris Cavill along the boards. Jonathan Schill is there. Now Zygamanis. Zygamanis, Schill to the front, back in, and Bateman the save as the Kingston Frontenacs have realized some momentum after that goal by Brett Kluge. Referee Mark Hicks is going to call another penalty against the Majors here. I believe it's going to be a holding penalty as the uh, as the Kingston's pressure is, is, not a, is not a good thing for the Majors, but certainly they're holding them up every time they get to the end. Ryan Simpson's going to spend two minutes in the box. Michael Zygamanis, arguably the most talented player on the ice. With all due respect to Sheldon Keefe and others. Zygamanis from Scarborough, Ontario. So the, the power play situation coming up. Or is it? Yeah, Kingston's, Kingston's got the power play. Yep. Well, Mark Popovic put the Majors in front 2-0, a second goal here. Jason Pinizzato drawing the assist on that goal at 16.38, and then just 48 seconds later, Brent Cluche taking away that Majors momentum. Brent Ormond with the assist. The Brian so Brian Simpson is off for interference. The Kingston Front next going the power play for the third time in this afternoon's game. They are 0-4-2. 1842, time of the penalty to Brian Simpson. Here's Sean Griffin ahead to Michael Zygamanis. We're into the final minute of play here in the first period. Puck into the Toronto zone. Dwayne Bateman will cover up with 53.2 seconds remaining in the period. And Bateman going for his uh, ritual skate after a, uh, after a whistle. Major's riding a little two-game win streak coming into this game, and, and they've been feasting on teams that have been struggling. They, they caught the Kitchener Rangers. Uh, They've lost six straight going into that game Friday night at the Kitchener Memorial Center. Extended that streak to seven games. This is the Ice Dogs yesterday here at the Gardens. Now the Ice Dogs have not been doing much winning this year, obviously. They took an eight-game losing streak into the Gardens here yesterday afternoon. The Majors were able to jump on them, and, and the Kingston Frontenacs drag a four-game losing skid with them into the Gardens here this afternoon. So the Majors have been fortunate in that they've caught three teams that have, have been struggling. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's a fortunate thing for the Majors, but uh, uh, they have to take into consideration that they got to keep working hard and not, uh, not sit back on their laurels and, and, and waiting for the puck to come to them. No, I can't take this Kingston team lightly. Kingston has been struggling, but they are still a, a potent team. They are ahead of the Majors in the standings by one point, and the Majors just have all sorts of trouble beating them. They've lost, well, they, over the last two years, the record is 1-8-0, and oh, and the Majors have lost the last seven. Sheldon Keefe sending it deep into Kingston territory. More relevance this year's record, which is still 0-2. Aaron Franson 
Bringing it up for Kingston over the red line. Franchin stood over the blue line by Sean Cation. Cation, a very versatile defense, can, can play physical, and he's good with the puck, as we've seen. Here's Cannon roughing it up with his man, Michael Levera. Has one last shot after the horn. Dwayne Bateman will make the unofficial save on Michael Zigmanis. After one period of play, the St. Michael's Majors lead the Kingston Frontenacs by a score of 2-1. When we come back in the second period, the Frontenacs will continue their power play for another 42 seconds. Let's go downstairs to Mike DeJean. Thanks very much, Tim. The Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs 2-1 on a couple of goals from their blue line core, Mark Popovic and Sean Cation. They lead it after 20 minutes of play. We'll be back with more in our first intermission after this on Major Hockey. Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens Majors Hockey. St. Michael's leading the Kingston Frontenacs by a score of 2-1 to one after one period of play. Joining us now is one of the uh, Kingston Frontenacs leaders, 20-year-old uh, right winger Matt Elich, as you uh, corrected me before you came in, Matt. Uh, I guess it's been a bit of a, a rough season for you guys in Kingston, uh, rebuilding a little bit. Yeah, I mean, last year we had a lot of, a lot of high-profile players like Mayu and Bradley and Allen. And that, uh, you know, not having them this year is takes, takes its hold on us by uh, not scoring. But, uh, you know, we got a lot of hardworking young kids, and uh, I feel we'll, we'll prevail this year. So let's talk about uh, yourself a little bit. You were a draft pick of the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning a couple of years ago. You said you've been to camp with them uh, a couple of times? Yeah, I was drafted uh, third round in 97. Uh, I've been to two camps already this year and last year. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this, this coming summer I'll be a free agent, but hopefully before then I can get signed. What are they looking uh, to you to do? What have they told you? Uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm fast out there. They want me to go to the net and work hard. You know, I'm banging a little bit and uh, put the puck in the net. So hopefully I can uh, do that for them. I know before the game, your coach, uh, Larry Mavity, was telling us that uh, they're looking for a bit more scoring punch. You guys have had a bit of, bit of trouble scoring lately. Uh, what is it? Are you guys just been uh, taking penalties or just, just been caught a little bit flat? Yeah, well, I agree on that. I mean, we, we do sometimes take stupid penalties, but... Uh, I mean, anytime we get out there, I think in the last three, four games, we've been, uh, you know, pretty good on our power play. But uh, even strength is where we have to work hard, and uh, it takes a few guys to step up. So hopefully, I'll be one of them. Now you're from the uh, Detroit area, I guess. Uh, initially, tell us why you, you came to the OHL as opposed to maybe going the uh, the college route or something. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I'm American, and being that uh, all the Americans go to college, but uh, my parents and I discussed it and decided that uh, maybe you know try out the OHL, see how it goes, and uh, I think I've been a success so far. So hopefully, I can. Uh, Go on to the National Hockey League. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. That's right winger Matt Elich of the Kingston Frontenacs. We'll be back on Majors Hockey after this break. And the next game for the St. Michael's Majors here on Rogers Community Television. Friday night from the nation's capital, a tough tilt against one of the better teams in the Ontario Hockey League, the Ottawa 67s, a 7.30 face-off Friday, November 27th. And let's take a look at some news and views from around the OHL this week. A tough break for Adam Mayer of the Owen Sound Platers, the Toronto Maple Leafs draft pick, suffering a fractured left cheekbone when he was elbowed by the Erie Otters' Jeff Zare this week. It's expected Mayer will be out of the Platers' lineup about three weeks unless surgery is required, and then he'll be out of the lineup at least two months. Uh, he'll meet with doctors for another reassessment on Monday. Mayer was impressive at Maple Leafs camp this year. In fact, he was one of the final cuts by the Leafs, and he was expected to be one of the leaders for Team Canada's National Junior Squad. So right now, that is in doubt. And speaking of the National Junior Team, Windsor Spitfire Captain Jason Ward's participation is also up in the air at this point. The Windsor Spitfire Captain now only skating again after suffering that very scary neck injury last month against the Plymouth Whalers. According to Windsor team officials, Ward is only lightly skating at this point, and it's not known when he'll be able to resume full workouts. They hope to have him back initially by Christmas, but right at this point, that is, not, uh, that is up in the air at this point. The second longest scoring streak in the Ontario Hockey League this year was snapped at 14 games this week. Ryan Reddy of the Belleville Bulls was, was held off the score sheet by the Guelph Storm in a 4-1 Belleville loss. The longest streak so far this season in the league is held by none other than the league's leading scorer. Surprise, surprise, Harold Druken of the Plymouth Whalers had a 16-game streak snapped on November the 6th. 
Let's take a look at some of the standings this week from around the league. The Central Division, the Barry Colts, one of the, the hottest teams in the league. Nine straight victories. They are the class of that division by far, 37 points, followed by Sudbury, North Bay. There's your Toronto St. Michael's Major still in the hunt for a playoff spot. And the Mississauga Ice Dogs, one win in 22 games. Into the East Division now, the Ottawa 67's on top. They have won eight in a row. Play the Majors, as we mentioned, on Friday, 40 points, followed by Peterborough, Belleville, Oshawa, and these very same Kingston front necks. The West Division, the Plymouth Whalers, they are coming off a loss, but they have 38 points, 18 wins in 23 starts, followed by Sault Ste. Marie, Sarnia, London, and Windsor, now tied in the basement. And the Guelph Storm struggling a bit, but they have turned it around in the past four games, four straight wins, 32 points, followed by the Erie Otters. The Erie Otters have won six games in a row, Owen Sound, Kitchener, and the Brampton Battalion. And this afternoon's games on the out-of-town scoreboard, those Plymouth Whalers that we told you about battling Guelph, that should be a great tilt in Guelph this afternoon. It's scoreless in the first period. Peterborough and Sudbury also scoreless, as are Kitchener and North Bay. The Rangers have lost seven in a row. Brampton at Sault Ste. Marie also nodded at Donuts in the first period. Tonight's games, the Ottawa 67s are playing up in Mississauga. That should be a one-sided affair, no doubt. Owen Sound playing at Barry Sarnia traveling down the highway to Oshawa. Well, the St. Michael's Majors looking good in the first period. They lead Kingston 2-1 to one after one period of play. We'll be back with more on Majors Hockey after this. Welcome back to Majors Hockey. St. Michael's leading Kingston 2-1 to one after one period of play. Let's go upstairs for a look at a couple of those first period goals with Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks, Mike. Glenn, the Majors struck early. The, they've been led by the, the two big guns on the defense, Sean Cation and Mark Popovic. And Sean Cation scoring the first Majors goal. And a nice goal it was. Uh, get a lot of time. Get a lot of time to, to tee this one up. Beautiful work with Sheldon Keith in the corner who feeds it back to Cation. And uh, Cation teeing it right up, taking the time, looking where he's going to shoot the puck, finds a sweet spot on the stick, and puts it right by Curtis Crookshank for the first goal of the game. Let's go right to the Kingston Frontenacs goal. 2 nothing majors at this point as we see the shot from the point. Yeah, we, the shot came from the point, and it came right on the, right on the stick of Brett Cluche. Bateman going down and sprawling across the, uh, sprawling across the ice. Uh, couldn't get there in time. Clucci all kinds of time. Flipped it over top and uh, got Kingston back into this game. Nice opportunistic goal by Brett Clucci. The late penalty had been called against the Majors at the time, and Kingston had really been buzzing the net, and Clucci managing the goal to bring Kingston right back into this game. They trail the Majors by a score of 2-1. Let's go back to Mike DeJong. Thanks very much, guys. And if you missed any OHL news this week, you can keep track of it on our program OHL this week. This week, rather, it runs after the St. Michael's broadcast on Sunday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. The latest news, interviews, game highlights, and profiles from around the Ontario Hockey League. The Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs 2-1 to one after 20 minutes of play. We'll be back with second period action from Maple Leaf Gardens after this break on Majors Hockey. And we're ready for second period action here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Let's go back upstairs to Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks, Mike. The Kingston front acts remain on the power play for the next 42 seconds. Majors leading 2-1. Sean Cation from Sheldon Keefe and Mark Popovic opening the scoring in the power play at 10.03. Mark Popovic from Jason Pinizzato at 16.38. And then Brett Cloutche late in the third period from Brett Ormond bringing the Kingston front acts to within one. And the front acts with an opportunity here to... Pull even. They've got the power play for another 42 seconds with Brian Simpson continuing to sit for his interference penalty. Aaron Franson hammers it into Toronto territory. Sean Griffin at the left point. Griffin feeds it deep. Back of the net, Mike Oliveira. Oliveira being covered by Mark Hines. Leaves it for Zygamanis. Hines is there, but Oliveira gets it back. Now Zygamanis in the corner. Zygamanis shill in front. Puck rolls to the crease. And the major Sheldon Keefe will skate it out and send it down the ice. Aaron Franson, back of the net, just 10 seconds remaining in the power play. Franson taking his time. Well, started out right wing for Zygamanis. Zygamanis to center. Zygamanis gains the blue line. The penalty is over. Zygamanis to the net. Bateman the save. 
And the Kingston player, Michael Oliveira, jamming at Bateman. Bateman a little, a little, uh, a little shaky on that one. Didn't, uh, didn't clear up the puck very quickly. And uh, opportunity Oliveira saw it there and went for it. But uh, fortunately for the majors, Bateman was able to hold, hold on to it. We play 48 seconds here in the second period. So the majors killing off yet another Kingston power play. The Bronx now 0 for 3 with the extra man. Jason Finizzato, big number 26, scored a goal against the Mississauga Ice Dogs yesterday afternoon. Finizzato will go to the bench as the Majors send up number one line of Barnes and Anna. Kevin Pratt, the uh, therapist for the, for the Majors, uh, very happy with the last couple of game performance. Talks about the, uh, the a better buzz in the room, as you might say. Uh, a lot more fun to win hockey games than it is to uh, it is to lose, and I, I know the majors are, are, are happy about winning the last couple. Matt Elitch for Kingston finds twice hard shot high, rising shot off the glass. Mark Popovic in front of the net, but the front next putting the pressure on. They've got Andrew Ian Arrow whacking at it. There's the shot to that. Bateman will cover up as Ian Arrow dashed to the net. Majors uh, bobbling the puck quite a bit in their own end right now. And, uh, Keep doing that with the, with the, with the talent the Kingston Front Ice have on the offensive thrust. They, uh, they can be in a bit of trouble. Well, the Kingston Front next, Matt Price, one of their offensive weapons last year. He is back, but they're missing Rob May, Matt Bradley. They lost Colin Chalk, Chris Allen. All very dangerous scores. All of them have graduated and moved on. Matt Cook, another one. Cook actually played some games in the NHL with the Vancouver Canucks this year, but has since been returned to Syracuse in the American Hockey League. Here's the chance for the majors as they crash the net there's a pile of bodies and now a scuffle has broken up back of the net as a goalie Curtis Crookshank went sliding through the crease area and we have players down back of the Kingston net there's Aaron Franson got knocked down from behind number two for the front next and Sheldon keeps at the bottom of that pile which seems to be the case all the time uh, taken down very hard by the Kingston Frontenacs, and uh, they were going to be penalized for it, but uh, the whistle blew a little too early there. There was a great opportunity for the uh, for Sean Cation to pick up the second goal. Well, with or without Mike Jefferson, the Majors are vigilant about protecting Sheldon Keith. Absolutely. Here he is. Again, he's so good at squeezing between the defensemen, and uh, they just they just uh, tackled him. That's all they could do, and uh, he still tried to get a shot away. He's still there, but uh, the two bodies moved the goalie right out of the net, and here you see the puck coming back. Sean Cation here with a great opportunity, an open net. Uh, but unfortunately, referee uh, Matt Hicks. And you can see what Cation is doing there. Yeah. He's protecting Sheldon Keefe. He's well aware that Franson's on top of Sheldon Keefe. And you, see, you can see that Cation gave Franson a little shot. The, the Majors are just absolutely uh, consistent in their uh, defending Sheldon Keefe. We saw Cation take a run at one of the Mississauga players towards the end of yesterday's game after a Liberty was taking with Sheldon Keefe late in the game. So the Majors, uh, well, the Majors go on the power play as Aaron Franson will get two minutes. And Aaron Franson, they're tackling Sheldon Keefe for the breakaway. That looked like something we, we might see in the, in the Great Cup game this afternoon. That was a <laughs> blowing tackle. Uh, who do you take in the Great Cup this afternoon, Tim? Well, because the Hamilton Tiger Cats are in the game plan, and uh, I do respect the organization and all the fine people that, that work for the organization, but growing up in Toronto and as an Argonaut fan, uh, uh, basically hating the Tiger Cats, uh, I just on principle cannot. Uh, pick them to win any game they play. So I, I'm obviously taking the Calgary Stampeders. Well, I'm uh, I, I'm a Burlington native. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm from Burlington. Lived there for the better part of my life, and uh, I'll have to take I'll have to take Hamilton because uh, uh, I think a lot of people that live in the Burlington Hamilton area know where I live. And if I was to publicly say that I was voting for Calgary, I don't know uh, I don't know what sort of situation that could develop into. Well, the Argos and Cats had great rivalries when I was growing up, and uh, I remember the Cats won a disproportionate share of playoff games against the Argos. Games you figured the Argos would win, and uh, it was very disheartening some of those losses. And you, you develop a you develop, you develop a passion against the other team. Yeah, yeah. No love lost. So it was very good for me to support the Cats always, on the field at least. So we have a referee just uh, called another penalty. We're going to see uh, uh, Sean Cation going to the box for tripping. And uh, it was against Matt Elich there. The uh, excellent, excellent wheels, as you mentioned earlier, Tim. Um, picture of Matt there. Wheeling around the net and uh, his, his great speed uh, surprised Sean Cation. And Sean Cation uh, in a position uh, to trip him. And that was all he could do to, to stop him from uh, coming out in front of the net. Sean Cation will cool off. He's been rather 
feisty here the last couple of minutes. Now, the Majors are on the power play, as Aaron Franson did incur a penalty. There were other penalties in that incident. We'll get them total for you, but the others were offsetting. Aaron Franson with the two minutes for tackling, you can call it. 151 remaining in France's penalty, but the Majors have offset that with a penalty to Sean Cation. So the power play has been wiped out. Cation, as you call the Glen off for tripping. The team's playing four skaters aside. And the front axe will have a brief power play when the penalty to France expires. Majors continue to lead 2-1 here, second period at Maple Leaf Gardens. 1804 remaining in the period. Sheldon Keefe. Lead pass from Mark Popovic. Here's Popovic to the red line. Popovic with room. Keith is with him. Here's Popovic deep. Puts on the brakes, turns, and finds Sheldon Keith. Keith to the net. Here's Sheldon Keith. Slot, weak shot. There's another shot by Kenny Carew as Crookshank handled the first shot. Now Keith drags it around again. Quick wrist shot. And Curtis Crookshank makes the save. And again, we see how just how nimble Sheldon Keith is in close. Uh, he consistently has big defensemen great all over him, but time and time again finds a way to get the shot off. And he is so good at coming out of the corner or from behind the net and bringing that puck right across the, uh, the, the hash marks here. Here we see him here going down. He still gets a shot off, but the, the defensive uh, units of the OHL are quickly learning that Sheldon Keith should not be allowed to get a shot off anywhere near the hash marks because not out of ten times, he's going to put it in the net. Well, Sean Griffin did a good effort, and Kenny Carew missed a, an open net there. Aaron Franson off for a holding. I, Ian Andrew I know, rather. And Ryan Barnes incurred roughing minors. And Sean Cation with the subsequent tripping. So there were the three penalties uh, resulting, of the, resulting from the tackle of Franson on Sheldon Keefe. 17.30 remaining in the second period, and 56 seconds remaining in that France penalty. Jason Pinizzato playing very well uh, to date, getting a lot more ice time, building, uh, again, more confidence. The uh, the coaching staff for the majors, Mike Feuda, Mark Osborne, Len Chittle, are, uh, are, are expecting great things from Jason this year, uh, stepping up into the second line uh, and uh, and really, uh, really creating a presence for himself and for the majors. 17-24 remaining here in the second period as the Majors send it deep into Kingston territory. Now Jonathan Schill misses the pass. The puck rolls down into Toronto territory. Puck back of the net. Mark Hines will touch on the icing. 37 seconds remaining in that France and penalty. Your favorite band playing here in the background, I believe, Gardens, uh, Tim. You're a big you like Courtney, you like Courtney Love as yeah, well. Yeah, sure. We're pretty hip that way, Glenn. We Absolutely. Know our, we know our modern bands. <laughs> So yeah, well, Jimmy Holmstrom, the... Uh, Jimmy Holmstrom's on top of everything. He's got the... Uh, uh, he had a nice touch yesterday with the Mississauga Ice Dogs uh, as Don Cherry was exiting the uh, exiting the ice from the presentation. He put on ZZ Top's sharp-dressed man, and uh, and uh, I saw I saw Don Cherry turn around and look up to Jimmy and give him the thumbs up, like, way to go, kid. You know my tune. <laughs> Jimmy, the music man here in Maple Leaf Gardens, working both majors and the Maple Leaf games. Mark Popovic at the point, kicks it ahead. For Jason Cannon, Cannon will lose it now. Sign that Kenny Karuk rings it off the crossbar. Nice shot by Kenny. Kenny Karuk, two goals in each of his last two games. Sheldon Keefe with the shot, and Curtis Crookshank steers it aside. Kept into the line by Cannon. Keefe with it again, bouncing puck. Keefe contained by Brett Ormond, and Ormond wrestles Keefe to the ice. That will draw a penalty as Dwayne Bateman skates to the bench. Delayed penalty call. Mark Popovic intercepted by Jonathan Schill. And again, Sheldon Keefe drawing the penalty. Again, we see how valuable Sheldon Keefe is to this team. Not only does he score goals, score power play goals, he's responsible directly for a lot of power plays by, by drawing the penalties. He's a treat to watch and uh, you know, very dangerous on the ice. Uh, when he's got that puck, it's very tough to stop him. And uh, good look at Sheldon there wearing the captain while Mike Jefferson is, uh, is serving the fifth of his six game suspension. Uh, what can you say about Sheldon Keefe that we haven't already said? Oh, just keep, just keep saying it. Just keep saying it over and over again. He's a tremendous player with a lot of poise on the ice, and, and uh, uh, he's, he's going off for uh, a little bit of a, a talk here to the uh, to the coaching staff, and uh, going to have a bit of a break, I think. They're going to get him out here again for the last part of the uh, uh, power play. But uh, just, just a tremendous hockey player. So the Majors will get their fourth power play opportunity of the game. 3.21, the time of the penalty to Brett Ormond for holding. Teams are four skaters aside now. Now the Majors are on the power play 
as the backhand shot rolls for the crease. Sean Cation out of the penalty box. Majors on the power play. Brock Boucher's shot, hit a skate, and the puck rolls into Toronto territory. Dwayne Bateman will leave it for Mark Popovic. Popovic. Back of the net, down goes the Kingston player, Matt Elish. Jason Cannon, right wing for Sheldon Keith. Keith into Kingston territory. Keith driving the net. Branson forces him wide. But Keith will take it around the other side. Jason Cannon for Popovic. Popovic shooting and Crookshank the save. Kenny Karoop quickly to the rebound. Kenny Karoop working the near board. Stops, setting up. Karoop to the net, side of the net. Now Popovic. Popovic finds his man Brock Boucher. Boucher centering, but Matt Elich will send it down the ice as Boucher was looking for Sheldon Keith. Good puck movement by Karoop and Brock Boucher. Weak shot from Matt Elich. Steered aside by Dwayne Bateman. Here's Jason Cannon. Cannon with a lead pass. Oliveira with a steal. Oliveira trying to finesse it around Cannon, but Cannon, the veteran, stood him up. And Brian Simpson, right wing for Toronto. Brian Simpson pounded along the boards by Sean Griffin. Sheldon Keith back of the net. Keith takes it on the fire boards. Here's that move to the net, but he's tripped up well in the play by number 22, Jonathan Schill. The Frontenacs are catching on. They're quickly collapsing on Sheldon Keith as he makes that move to the high slot area. Good move by uh, by Bateman there, uh, covering the puck up. And uh, referee didn't blow the whistle right away. And as soon as the Kingston player skated by him, he uh, released the puck. And here we have the Majors uh, forced to play back into the other end. And now we've got a face-off in the end. Smart heads up play by, uh, by Bateman. Ryan Walsh leading that last Majors rush. And we will have a face-off in the Kingston zone. Four seconds remaining in the red form on penalty. So Majors will at least get a draw here to set things up. Ryan Barnes is back on the ice after serving his two-minute run with penalty, as would be Andrew Ionero as well. The new St. Michael's Majors program is out, Glenn. Yeah, the new the new program is out. It features the, uh, the players. It, it explains a bit about the mentorship program. It also explains the relationship that was formulated over the summer with the Toronto Maple Leafs Sports and Entertainment and, uh, and, the, and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors hockey team. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's available at all games. Uh, and uh, pick one up from your uh, from your souvenir stand. Mike Jefferson and Brian Simpson are featured on the front cover of the new majors program. And yeah, we uh, we went with Simpson and, uh, and and Jefferson. Jefferson being the captain, and Simpson the Scholastic Player of the Year last year. And again, St. Mike's uh, keeping with the philosophy of academics and athletics, making the true man. Um, figured that would be the uh, a great a great way to uh, present that. Sure, Jefferson and uh, Simpson representing the the dual nature of the St. Michael's hockey program, the emphasis on both athletics and academics. Every team in the OHL nominates a Scholastic Player of the Year at the end of the year. Manny Malhotra won the overall award last year with the Guelph Storm. Here's Aaron Franson shooting and Kenny Karoop blocks it. DJ Miracle follows up, shot wide, carries around to the far side. Eric Kraft moves up. Graf looking for the man in front. Kluche turns, loose puck in front. It's loose again. They shoot again. Kluche, and it's wide. And referee Mark Hicks is signaling penalty. Those fans sitting in the end blues. Or is it? He's brought the arm down. Let's see what he does. He's skating towards the penalty box. Now's the time. Take part in the thing. Still haven't seen him goal. actually signal the penalty. Go ahead. Who got the goal that you want? Yeah. So some action in front of Dwayne Bateman. Jason is going to spend two minutes in the box for holding. Here's a shot by Kluche. Bateman steers that aside. You see him reach for the loose bucket, squirts loose, and Kluche will get another whack at it. So Pinizzato caught for holding in that little flurry of action in front of Dwayne Bateman. Rotnax have been firing blanks in the power play this evening. They'll get another crack at it. That Kingston power play last year consistently ranked number one. Nowhere near as potent this year. Thought it's a great opportunity for them to get back in this game. Uh, down one goal. Certainly uh, give them the boost they're looking for if they're able to put one in on the power play here. Front next, power play ranked 10th in the league now, 21.6%. Sean Cation shooting the puck over the uh, over the Majors bench. Mike Feud has got to be asking himself, what did I say to him? Just about hit me in the head with the puck. Daryl Thompson, number 19 for the Kingston Primax from Barrie, Ontario. Played for the Toronto Marlies Midgets. He is an underager in his first OHL year. 
second round draft selection along with Morgan McCormick. Two second round picks for the front axe this year. McCormick not dressed. Out with the ankle injury. He is two to three days away at least, according to GM head coach Larry Mavity. Mark Popovic along the boards, clearing it ahead for Ryan Barnes. The Frontenacs are on the power play. This is their fifth power play opportunity of the game. Jonathan Schill back of the net. Schill will start it out for Kingston. Ryan Barnes and Sheldon Keefe up front for Toronto. Pass in the left wing, Oliveira unable to handle it. And Oliveira gets it back, throws it in front. Hines stops it, but Bateman had to jump on it as the Kingston player, Michael Zygamanis, was in the vicinity. A uh, dangerous situation there. I, uh... I, uh, I don't think the line's been caught, the tip by uh, Sheldon Keefe there, the, the puck going over the blue line there. I do believe that it wasn't offside. He had already indicated that it wasn't offside. Keefe uh, trying to slow the puck down with the tip. I believe that the player put himself offside, but uh, fortunately for the majors, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a face-off instead of a goal. Michael Zygamanis, very highly rated native of Scarborough in his second OHL season. He was a standout as an underager. It's rare that you see the 16-year-olds play to the level he played at last year. He's a uh, he's a fine hockey player, and he's playing with a lot of good talent uh, here today. Michael Zygamanis will take the draw against Kenny Karoop. And Karoop leans forward. The Majors win the draw, and they send it all the way down the ice, killing a valuable time on the Kingston power play. Lead pass for Michael Oliveira. Takes it in the skate. Throws it for Jonathan Schill. Schill in the corner. Takes it around, back of the net. Jonathan Schill with some moves, finds Oliveira. Oliveira contained by Cannon. Schill going for the loose puck. Now it's loose on the boards, and Ryan Walsh doing a good job with the penalty kill. Sends it the length of the ice. Great penalty killing unit uh, today for the, uh, for the majors. Sheldon Keefe and Ryan Barnes working up front with Chris Cava and Chris Boucher on the blue line as Cava breaks up the rush and sends it back into Kingston territory. 27 seconds remaining in this not terribly impressive power play. Aaron Franson makes a move. Right wing for Zygamanis, covered by Keefe. And the Majors again break up the rush. Matt Price, left wing, he'll just hammer it in. Following up is Elich, leaves it at the point for Ormond. Ormond will get it in front. Now there's a loose puck as big number 12, Andrew Ionero, had a chance. Here's Sean Griffin, left point shot deflected by Andrew Ionero. Majors back to full strength. So the front axe, 0 for 5 on the power play as the Majors called on the icing with the score. The Majors 2 and the Kingston front axe 1. This is St. Michael's Hockey. 2-1 to score. The Majors lead the front axe. Tim Hoppy along with Glenn Lowe's, former Toronto Marlboro, overseeing the ice you played on for four years. Was it four years, Glenn? Three, three years. Three here. years, okay. Yep. Three years with the Toronto Marlies. As Jason Cannon takes a shot at the bouncing puck. Puck is back of the Kingston net. And Mark Hicks says the rule book out again. And notice another infraction. He yep. will call this one interference. Andrew Ionero is going to go off for, uh, for either tripping or, or interference, uh, Jim. I sense a possible turning point here. The Majors now with another power play opportunity. And we've seen how dangerous that power play is. Game's a lot, lot different than it was yesterday. Uh, yesterday, Mississauga Ice Dogs come into town. Very few penalties were called, uh, which is a surprise considering that the Majors and the uh, and the uh, Ice Dogs are probably two of the most penalized teams in the league. Uh, today, we've seen uh, we haven't seen probably more than two or three minutes go by in the game without a penalty being called. Well, the Ice Dogs are definitely the most penalized team in the league, but not by a big margin. They just happen to uh, have that status. The Majors uh, right up there as well. The faceoff will be in the Kingston zone as Andrew Ionero is off for two minutes. Major's power play, Ryan Barnes, Sheldon Keefe, Kenny Karoop in the spot normally occupied by Mike Jefferson. Sean Cation, Mark Popovic, as we see Cation stepping up on the draw. He's lining up with the left hash marks. Sheldon Keefe set up right behind Ryan Barnes. And that's Mark Popovic at the right point. As Barnes forces a draw forward, Keith jumps to it. Keith to the net, slides it through the crease. And now the puck loose along the boards. To the point for Kenny Karoop. Kenny Karoop looking for Popovic. Here's Popovic. High slot, shooting it. Crookshank steers it aside. Uh, there's Sheldon Keith quickly on the rebound. Keith along the boards. Working deep with Kenny Karoop. Finds Karoop back of the net. Barnes in front. Here's Karoop bringing around to the far side. Cycles low for Sheldon Keith. Cation at the point, and back to Keith. 
Keefe to Karoop. Karoop to the net. Karoop shooting down goes Quickshot. They score! As Kenny Karoop found room, and the Majors' power play strikes again. Hard work paid off. Curtis uh, Crookshake, not at all happy about that one. I think he feels that the uh, the Majors penetrated the crease area pretty effectively and uh, pretty much bowled him over, put the puck in the net. Yeah, but, I'm, wondering, uh, I'm wondering about that myself. I don't think there was goalie interference there going after the puck, but uh, they got the initial there was, shot there off. Here's Karoop on the wraparound. There you are. You see Ryan Barnes uh, standing his ground in front of the net to try to cause havoc. Sheldon keeping Sean Cation playing with the puck back and forth. Sheldon sees the opportunity, makes the move for the give and go. But uh, Group just, just just came, and uh, absolutely, it was uh, Kenny Group in the uh, in, in your screen that was. Uh, and, and Sheldon Keefe got Sheldon the goal. Sheldon Keefe got the, got the rebound. There's Sheldon Keefe collecting the garbage, right. and Crookshank's concern would be with Kenny Group. So Sheldon Keefe fires his 20th goal of the year, the first major to hit the 20 goal mark this year, and the third major in their two year renaissance. Anthony Turzo, and even 20 last year, and. Steve Zork with 34, so one more goal from Sheldon Keefe, and he will be number two in major single season scoring. Hard shot from outside the blue line, puck back of the net, as the majors, Brock Boucher let that fly. The majors lead 3-1, thanks to a couple of power play goals. Cation with the other assist. Sean Cation having a great game, making up some points today. Danny Group extending his point scoring streak now to eight games. Errol Thompson for Kingston shooting just wide. Dangerous opportunity for the Frontenacs on the rush. Two on one for the Frontenacs. Brett Kluche swipes at it. Quickly to the puck is Daryl Thompson again. Thompson forced wide by Karup. Collision back of the net. Kluche and Kava. Lock along the far boards. DJ Miracle trying to work it loose. They will get a whistle with 9.28 remaining here in the second period as we'll check the scoring for the majors against Sheldon Keefe with his 20th goal of the year. Henry Karuk and Sean Cation drawing the assist. We've got a fight going on here. Chris Cava and uh, Kluche going at it. Both the big heavyweight, big bout here today. Cava's got his helmet off, which doesn't help him, but uh, he's, he's trying, he's staying in there. Luce getting a good punches in on, uh, on Chris Gava. Gava just trying to get himself freed up so they can get the helmet off of, of Breck Luce, and there it goes. This could turn into a danger. Chris Gava. Chris Gava telling the referee there. not to break it up. He was looking at the referee and saying, give me a chance here. I got his helmet off. I want this kid, Gava saying. Yeah, I want him. Boys. You know, he got my helmet off first, and I've taken a few good punches here. If I'm going home with a black eye, I want to make sure he's going over the same. Cava taking a beating there as yep, Kluche got the, the right free. Gotta give credit to both both players there. Stuck it out. It was a, uh, a good tilt for sure. Cava doesn't look any uh, any worse for wear uh, after after taking a, uh, a few significant blows from uh, Brett Kluche. So Chris Cava will take a seat in the penalty box along with Brett Kluche. That's probably one of the better boats I've seen this year in the Gardens, Tim. The referees actually stood apart and let them uh, let them do their thing. Well, Cava two years older, but Kluche a little bit bigger. And Kluche, good good pick by the Kings of Fonax, our first round pick. He's got that size, a little bit of a scoring touch. Hasn't quite manifested itself this year, but he does have the Kingston goal of this afternoon. And for all the scouts that are here today watching these uh, watching these two teams, uh, looking at uh, looking at our officials' mark kicks. Calling uh, lots of lots of penalties today. Now, Glenn, I'm a little concerned, uh, a little confused about these scoring stats we have for the majors. They're showing Sheldon Keefe with 17 goals coming into this game. Now, I'm almost positive he scored his 19 yesterday. He scored two goals against Mississauga. Well, so we'll, we'll, we'll double check that at uh, at intermission. Absolutely. Now, what I'm suspecting is those stats do not reflect yesterday's game with the ice dogs that's, so, that's so, probably what it is the so, uh, stats are probably taking off the uh the internet computer so we will dispense with that page chris cava heading to the dressing room uh so sheldon keefe indeed with his 20th goal here this afternoon Nine twenty-eight remaining in the second period all right well 
chest that we have uh, available to us. These are right indicate that uh, uh, that it's uh, 20 goals. Well, we, 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 I just heard a correction for Bob Comsick. They've given the goal now to Kenny Karoop, so uh -huh. Sheldon Keefe will hold at 19 goals. Now, we saw Keefe take the shot. I just would guess that Karoop, who was in the crease, we know he was in the crease, bothering. Probably went off his body or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Probably uh, that's why they've given him the goal. We saw Chris Cava heading to the dressing room. Uh, obviously, he's not suspended by any uh, by any means. We hope that uh, he'll be returning real quickly. Maybe it's just an equipment uh, equipment problem that he has to get sorted out. It's not an injury. So Kenny Karoop, you see, on the bench with the goal, officially credited with the goal for the St. Michael's Majors. And Kenny Karoop continues to be on a tear, scored Two goals yesterday against Mississauga and a couple of goals against Kitchener on Friday. Well, there you hear it. Uh, Chris Cava picking up a 10-minute misconduct for, uh, for either an action or, or a gesture to the referee. And uh, that's why he's gone to the dressing room early with only nine minutes left. He's got 15 minutes to serve in his penalty, so he's just going to spend in the dressing room and maybe ice his hand. <laughs> So they threw the book at Chris Cava, 15 minutes worth of penalties, five fighting, 10 minute misconduct, and Brett Cloutche drawing simply the five for fighting at 10 of 32. I was saying earlier, for uh, for a lot of teams that come into Maple Leaf Gardens, it's a real time to really, you know, show show their stuff because uh, Toronto is just a just a, a breeding ground for scouts and and uh, and uh, NHL representatives here at Maple Leaf Gardens. So uh, someone like Brett Cloutche, who's picked up a goal already today, a nice goal at that. And picks up a fight where I would have to say he maybe got the upper hand on that fight. I don't usually like to like to uh, say anything negative against the majors, but I have to say that Trek Kluge probably got the upper hand of that bout. And uh, any scout or any representative from the NHL that sees the uh, two-way player, somebody that can score goals and, and can also uh, play physical, uh, they like to see that. Majors right back in the rush. Here's Matt Ellis moving in the middle, looking for Brian Simpson. Down goes Ellis as the puck loose along the boards, and Mark Popovic will take it. Popovic for Mark Hines. Hines quickly back to Popovic. Popovic wasn't ready. Now we have a loose puck, and Hines and Schill bump in the corner. But Hines moving it ahead to Matt Ellis. Sean Griffin steps up for Kingston, takes the hit from Ellis, shoves him right back. Matt Ellis, big, strong kid, third-round pick from Welland Junior B, just finding his stride here in the OHL and the majors of high hopes for Matt Ellis, one of their top priority draft selections this year, bothered by that mono for most of this year, but just now working back in the lineup. Two and one, Keith shooting hard shot right off the chest. Ryan Barnes is with him. Here's Keith back of the net. Keith with 19 goals. Looking shot, for that number 20. A shot from Keith's surprise. Uh, the goaltender from Casey Crookshank wasn't even expecting it and uh, shot him right in the chest. Keith just wired that. That was, that was a blast. Sean Keith never wastes an opportunity to put the puck on that. Play whistle down with 7.55 remaining here in the second period. Majors fans enjoying the Maple Leaf practice this morning, Glenn. The doors are open at 11 o'clock. A good turnout for the Maple Leaf practice at 11.15. And Ty Domi entertaining the fans. Domi, a big fan of the Ontario Hockey League, graduated from the Peterborough Peets. And prior to the game, Ty Domi sporting a Majors jersey with his son Max. Drop the puck for the uh, ceremonial face-off. Yeah, we gave we gave Max, uh, uh, we gave Ty Domi and Max both their own shirts, uh, St. Mike's shirts, and uh, came out to drop the puck. Uh, I know Ty was uh, maybe considering coming up to say a few words here and, and talking and discussing about our uh, <laughs> our incident uh, some years back. Uh, he did comment that it was a that it was a beauty, but unfortunately his daughter's not well and is at is at home with uh, with his uh, lovely wife, and we hope uh, she has a speedy recovery. And I guess he wanted to get home and, uh, and see how his daughter was faring. So um, I want to thank uh, Ty Domi for, for coming out to help out with the opening ceremonies. And here we've got a bout. And we've there's a, a shot by Sheldon we've got a goal. We've got a, we've got a goal and a bout. The majors are signaling goal. But we have a fight down at the other end in the Toronto zone. But Sheldon Keefe on the rush right wing. The red light did come on, so we're not sure what's going on with the goal situation. The fight is broken up. It was Gerald Moriarty. And Matt Price scuffling back in the Toronto zone. Now, now the fight may negate the goal. Here's Sheldon Keith. Here's Sheldon Keith. The fight's going on right now. I don't yep. think the referee has really noticed it. He's watching the action in front. Now look Keith. At the shot. Not clear whether the puck yeah. entered the net, but you see the major players signaling goal. Meanwhile, the fight, the fight had started long before the goal. That'll be a tough call for uh, referee. Referee Mark Hicks to call on that one. Well, uh, I, I saw Hicks point to the fight. When the puck went in the net, he did not point at the net as they normally do for a goal. He pointed at the other end of the ice. And he's indicating right now the faceoff will take place right outside the goaltender. Yeah, the implication being the fight 
uh, warned at a stoppage and That's the right. heck with the goal if it was a goal. Well, well, we saw the red light go on, so the goal judge thought it was a goal. I'm picking up what I was saying about uh, about Ty. He uh, he uh, great for him to come out today after after practice this morning, knowing that his uh, knowing that his uh, young daughter isn't uh, isn't feeling all that well. Took the time out to come out and uh, um, uh, drop the puck with his young son Matt, young son Max, Max. and he's a he's a uh, he's a he's a good little guy. And uh, I know they were having some fun with him uh, earlier in the practice. Uh, they had uh, they had his young son on the ice, and he was taking some some shots on Curtis Joseph. And Curtis was uh, allowing some uh, some uh, great opportunities for, for Max. Did, 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 did Max manage to find the five hole? He Curtis? found the five. He found oh, five hole. Another, another five Rumble times. Clan big fight back of the uh, behind the glass. Some some happy, some happy kids. Some happy kids, and uh, you know you see you see the exuberance down here in the Gardens, and and for those that haven't been down here. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come down. Prices are real inexpensive, and if you've got uh, if you've got a hockey team, we've got a lot of promotions going on around the hockey team um, promotions. So uh, make sure that uh, you give us a call at 596-2851 for all the details. Many hockey teams out in force yesterday afternoon for the Ice Dogs game, and again the majors, 1 o'clock next Saturday afternoon right here at Maple Leaf Gardens against Daniel Kachuk and the Barry Colts, one of the top teams in the Ontario Hockey League. Yeah, should be providing a great entertaining afternoon. Molson's the sponsor of the game, so uh, with, a, with, a, with a large sponsor such as Molson's, you never know what to expect. Uh, you, you can be assured it's going to be a fine, fine sponsor. Chance in front, shot just wide. Maybe it hit the post. Brock Boucher set up by Kenny Karoop. Majors continue to attack. Pinizzato, Karoop, and Boucher. Good-looking line. Andrew Ionero gloves it down. Ionero takes a hit from Kenny Karoop. And the puck at the Majors line. Daryl Thompson will try and barge it to the net. Thompson held up by Rasmussen. Bouncing puck back of Dwayne Bateman. Kenny Karoop takes the hit. As the puck along the boards, Ion Arrow applying the body. Ion Arrow still digging for it. Ion Arrow, the high scoring front max rookie, and he cycles it back of the net. No one there to receive the cycle. And Mark Popovic puts his head down, and I don't think he meant to do that. Flipped it over the glass and into the crowd. Oh, he made a happy fan. He made a fan very happy. Uh, collectible puck. Mike Olivero, one of the top scorers on the Kingston front next. He is second in scoring and one of the remaining, one of the members, uh, one of the high scoring players carrying over from last year's high power team. Front next were the dominant offensive machine in the Ontario Hockey League last year. Leading, leading away in penalty killing, goal in uh, power play scoring rather, goal scoring. They weren't quite as strong defensively as a team and it cost them in the playoffs. But they certainly had the firepower. Now they're in a rebuilding phase. GM coach Larry Mavity says it's time to rebuild. It's time to start developing the 17-year-olds. Sean Cation pass for Sheldon Keefe. Sean Griffin keeps it in left point. But uh, no, I'm sorry, did not keep it in. That will be an offside, and we'll go downstairs to Mike DeJean. Thanks very much, guys. Coming up in our second period intermission, we'll talk to one of the goal scorers tonight for the St. Michael's Majors, fine rushing defenseman Mark Popovic. We'll also take a look at some news around the league. We'll have another update on former Major Bouyar Amodoski and his status with the Louisiana Ice Skaters of the East Coast, East Coast Hockey League. We'll take a look at some of the scouting around the league and have an analysis of second period action. The Majors' next game in action will be on Saturday, November the 28th, against the Barry Colts, a 1 p.m. faceoff, followed by that game we mentioned in Ottawa next Friday against the Ottawa 67s. Then the Mississauga Ice Dogs back here at the Gardens, November 29th. And again, at Mississauga, uh, they're playing the Ice Dogs eight times this season, including Wednesday, December the 2nd, at the new Hershey Center in Mississauga. Well, the Majors looking good so far, leading the Kingston Frontenacs 3-1 to one with more second period action. Let's go upstairs to Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Mike Feuda, the head coach of the St. Michael's Majors, Glenn. He has won his last two games, his record 2-3-1 and one, as a head coach for the Majors. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very happy with the team's performance to date. Uh, they're, they're getting into a groove and they're getting to enjoy the fact that they're winning some games. And they're leading the Kingston Frontenacs 3-1 here at Maple Leaf Gardens, looking to bust off a seven-game losing slide against Kingston. That's seven straight losses in head-to-head -head meetings with Kingston over the last two years. Over for two this year. So the Frontenacs have already clinched a split of the season series, but the Majors have a chance to keep it up. Third of four meetings between the Majors and the Frontenacs this year in the final visit of the Frontenacs to Maple Leaf Gardens this afternoon. 
Ryan Barnes working it for Sheldon Keefe, centering for Barnes, and Quickshank, a nice save as the Majors look like they're on the power play, but they were not, just Keefe and Barnes working their magic. Magic it is, too, because they are uh, they are one uh, one item on this hockey team. Here we see them, they just, they're just so great at handling the puck with one another. Sheldon in the corner, Ryan uh, making his way towards the front of the net, and uh, that give and go is always a, a, a useful tool in this, uh, in this great game of hockey. Sheldon Keefe, the Mr. Everything for the St. Michael's Majors. Mike Jefferson was assessed an additional two game suspension by the league on top of the minimum four games he incurred for the brawl with the Greyhounds a week and a half ago. And Nick Jones of the Greyhounds assessed an additional three games essentially for the sucker punch situation. He incurred the minimum two for being engaged in a second fight on the ice in the same stoppage while Jefferson's extra two games clearly for his flying leap as he came out of the penalty box. Well, it's very clear that the OHL is taking a stand that they're not going to tolerate uh, frivolous uh, activities such as coming out of the penalty box or sucker punching. Uh, we've seen the, the, the heavy suspension given to Jeff Kugel and from Mike Jefferson to come, out, to come out of the penalty box during an altercation. So soon after that incident, it, uh, I was very surprised that he didn't get more than six games. Pass to an open wing as Brent Ormond steps into it. Shot is blocked and Ryan Walsh takes it. Walsh looking for Matt Ellis. Puck loose in the left wing. Eric Braff steps up. Mark Popovic gets a hold of it. Now Braff to the line. Here's Braff. Big hit by Mark Popovic taking his size into account. Mark Popovic, a big guy, plays it rugged, but it's enough to throw those big open eyes body checks like he did there, but that one was impressive stepping into the larger Eric Braff. Very nice hit. Daryl Thompson takes the head as Sean Cation applies the body. Sean Cation with his fifth goal of the year earlier. Now Cation. Cation will start it up. Cation to center. The smooth skating former Kaladin Canadian. Cation to the line. Cation stops. Cation looking for the man. Couldn't make the pass work. And Jamie Young is on the ice. We haven't seen a lot of Jamie Young. Number 10 for the Kingston Frontenacs there. First round draft pick last year in a very... Very talented young player who has yet to fully develop at the OHL level. He's just been bothered by injuries, it seems, for the last two years. Players pump in the near corner. Jamie Young making the most of this opportunity. Jamie Young on the ice with Daryl Thompson. Now Young works it free, and Young will try and outlet it to Aaron France in the majors. Break it up as Karup sends it bouncing into Kingston territory. Aaron Franson will bang it off the boards, and Sean Cation takes it. Cation back handing it into Kingston territory. Offside waved off. And Sean Griffin, nice move on Kenny Karup. Finds the center ice circle. Long shot handled by Dwayne Bateman in the Majors goal. 329, the time remaining here in the second period. The Majors leading the Kings to front next by a score of three to one. Wayne Bateman out for his skate. Even limber. Dwayne Bateman making his sixth start in the majors net this afternoon after coming over the deal with the Plymouth Whalers. Uh, Patrick DeVici made his debut as a starter yesterday afternoon against the Mississauga Ice Dogs. But Bateman back in goal. Bateman had a wild game. First star of the game in Kitchener on Friday night. Peppered with 57. Kitchener shots and kept the majors in that game, which they won 4-3. He's, he's faring very well for these majors, and uh, uh, hats off to Patrick DeVigi, uh, playing a great game yesterday. Yeah, DeVigi looked pretty sharp, stopped 26 of 27 against the Mississauga Ice Dogs, as Michael Zygamanis showing that speed and puck-carrying skill, wheels into center, hauled down by Ryan Barnes, caught up by Barnes, and Barnes brings it right back. Here's Barnes waiting for Popovic. Barnes to the net, shooting. And puts it. Popovic scores. And the Majors go front 4-1. Wow, the Majors just taking, taking liberties in that Kingston crease. I can't believe both Barnes and Popovic were allowed to get that close. Well, when the puck's free, I don't think the referee can really call the, call the play down. If the puck's in the crease, you've got to get into the crease to, to score that goal. But that was a third effort. Here we see Barnes coming down the wing. Great burst of speed, and instead of going around the net, takes the chop and tries to stuff it on the short side. It slides underneath the goalie, Bateman, and there was uh, well, Sheldon, Sheldon Keefe, Keefe, it looks like. He yep. slid it underneath the goalie, and uh, uh, that's uh, that's the nature of the game. It's that second and third effort that's going to score you goals. Well, it, it was Popovic after the oh, block. Keefe came Popovic. in after the fact. Uh, so we think the goal will go to Mark Popovic, but Brian Barnes never really should have got that close. I thought Fred Hormon should have forced him a little wider. Uh, Hormon ended up just hacking at him as... 
as uh, Barnes is able to find room. Well, that's one of the reasons the Majors like Brian Barnes. He's a big, tough kid, he uses his size to advantage. Here's a chance for the Majors, uh, the Funax right wing, and a charging Matt Elitch using that blazing speed of his, putting the high shot on Dwayne Bateman. Yeah, good, good burst of speed by good burst of speed by Matt, and uh, I don't think he caught the open winger on the side. It's a two-on-one opportunity, and he took the liberty of taking the shot himself. So let's take a, a look at the official line on that goal. They've given it to Ryan Barnes unassisted. So Barnes clearly was able to jam it through in his own in the right wing, and Mark Popovic was just sort of motioning towards it, but Barnes judged to have put it over the goal line. Great uh, great effort by Ryan Barnes. He's got a lot of heart, and uh, he works. He, he, he never takes a night off when he plays for this majors. He's always coming out putting in 110%, and that's what the uh, coaches this majors hockey can expect from all of the players. Ryan Barnes with his ninth goal of the year, putting the Majors in front by a score of 4-1. to one. Good aggressive hustle by Ryan Barnes, barreling down the right wing, the off wing, and dragging that puck to the net. The defense have to do a better job of forcing those guys wide. Otherwise, the goaltender ends up with dangerous puck carriers like Ryan Barnes in his doorstep and the likes of Popovic and Keefe barreling in for rebounds. Here's Sheldon Keefe, right wing. Keefe for the Majors. Barnes again, shooting. Keefe out for the rebound, and Crookshank denies Ryan Barnes. They moved that puck around so well. Mark Hines, back of the Majors net, 222 remaining in the period. Good, solid effort by the Majors here this afternoon. They lead the front next 4-1. Ryan Barnes, long shoot-in, bouncing puck. Sean Griffin gets to the loose puck. Intercepted. Here's the Majors. Matt Ellis driving it. And what was Sean Griffin thinking there? A blatant giveaway in his own zone, intercepted by Matt Ellis. I'm sure Larry Mavi is going to have something to say about that when he gets back to the bench. I think he has some concerns about the defenseman's play in their own zone, at least in the latter stage of this second period. Brian Simpson takes the hit along the boards. Mark Popovic. And now we're seeing the real Mark Popovic, just very adept at handling the puck in his own zone, leading the rush, moving the puck out. The wrist injury appears to be fully healed, and we're seeing Mark Popovic in all his glory now in the last few games. Two goals in the last three games. High sticking, uh, high sticking on the puck, uh, call down by by Hicks. A face off down deep in the uh, Kingston, in the Kingston end. One of the other things I've noticed as well, the last 10 minutes of this game is that the, uh, the Kingston front necks haven't been forechecking as much as they were in the first period. And I don't know whether that's because they got burned a couple of times with a couple of guys deep, or whether the uh, the, uh, the the forwards have been uh, just a little bit lazier than they were in the first part of this period. Well, there's something a little off about the Kingston front necks. They don't look like the team that came in here earlier this year. They they are slumping. They've lost four straight. They have been having trouble scoring goals, which was never a problem in the past. They're looking a little weak in their own end tonight, but give full credit to the majors. This is a team that is developing. A lot of these players are just finding their legs. The team is slowly but surely gelling, and the majors really do have a lot of offensive weapons as Brian Simpson lets it go, and puck knocked down in front. Now Matt Ellis hustling to it. Matt Ellis is developing into a physical presence up front for the majors as well. Simpson throws the check. Ellis will touch on the delayed offside, but the Majors missing Mike Jefferson and George Nistis, but when you consider Sheldon Keefe, Ryan Barnes, those are two frontline OHL players. Jason Cannon could play up front. We're seeing Kenny Karupa's really found his stride. He's scoring at just a blazing pace. Mark Popovic has really improved with the wrist injury. Sean Cation, another weapon on the blue line. Jason Pinizzato. Pinizzato has found his stride the last few games. And a lot of these 18-year-old players are really maturing into full OHL players, and that's the nature of the Ontario Hockey League. The 17 year, a few of them stand out as rookies, but most of them don't really develop until they're into that second year, and until they're 18 year olds, and we're seeing that with the Majors this year, a team that is primarily led by 18 year old players. Absolutely. Full credit to Mike Diuta for giving the uh, younger players the necessary ice time for them to find that groove. And the great thing about being led by 18 year olds, they all come back the next year, and you just have a whole bunch of very talented 19 year olds. Mark Napier stepping aside as head coach this year to concentrate on the draft. It's a very important transitional type draft in the Ontario Hockey League. A lot more 16-year-olds will be drafted, and you've got to get out there and get a look at them so you don't miss the boat. Shot for the point by Aaron Franson and knocked down by Dwayne Bateman with the final minute of the second period. Kenny Karoop for Toronto, back of the net. Karoop banking it off the boards, gloved down by... Number 17 for the front axe, that would be Matt Price as the puck back into Kingston territory. And the front axe banking off the glass down into Toronto territory. Dwayne Bateman is signaling the icing. Well, Glenn, we've got the Barry Colts in here next Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Another rare Saturday afternoon game, the Mississauga game yesterday. And, and uh, this one next Saturday, the Colts 
one of the top draws in the Ontario Hockey League. They've won two straight with majors this year. They're one of the powerhouses with Daniel Kachuk. Michael Hendrick was in the doghouse. Uh, Bert Templeton didn't even dress him the last time the majors played the, uh, the Colts uh, a week or so ago up in Barrie, but Hendrick, a uh, top pick. Martin School has a lot of uh, talents on that very team. Denny Schmidtke and Brian Finley are projected to be first-round NHL picks this year to go along with the three they already have. I'm certain that the uh, that the majors this week will be practicing very hard. We're watching a lot of game tapes from the uh, from the last couple of meetings from the Barry Colts because, in all honesty, uh, in both those meetings, Barry uh, uh, completely dominated the game for the most part, and uh, that's something that they want to get away from. They're going into Barry with a great crowd that they always get up there at the Molson Center. Um, I'm sure that the that the uh, that the, uh, the majors want to do well when they're back here playing on Saturday afternoon next week, and uh, it's a one o'clock start. Should promise to be a great game, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, the Barry Colts are the class of this Central Division. They almost certainly will finish first place in the division. The majors right now scrambling with the Kingston Finax for the final conference playoff spot. They are one point behind Kingston for that eighth and final playoff spot in the in the Eastern Conference. But the way the majors have been playing a play, just the way some of these players have stepped up, as we've been discussing, I see the potential for majors moving up in the standings and maybe getting away from the playoff scramble. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Settling into more of a scramble for playoff position rather than just getting in. But that remains to be seen. The majors have to maintain the momentum. And while well, one of the major players is being contained by the linesman at center and... Somebody going after Sheldon Keefe once again and uh, Ryan Barnes wants, uh, wants a piece of uh, whoever's uh, is ever responsible for... Uh, with the penalty. Well, Sheldon Keefe is going to the penalty box. Sheldon Keefe, a little on the chippy side. I asked Mark Napier if there's a bit of the Bobby Clark in Sheldon Keefe Friday in Kitchener, and he said, well, Keefe doesn't use a stick to the same extent Bobby Clark did, but Keefe does get his share of slashing type penalties, so Keefe is in the penalty box, I believe, for slashing. Well, I, saw, I saw a slashing Mark penalty call. There's Mark Napier sitting in the gold. Jack Ferguson behind him, the former director of central scouting for the Ontario Hockey League, now working for the majors. And there's the uh, there's the head coach, Mike Fuda. Very pleased with his team's performance over the last couple of games, and uh, he's got to be pleased with 4-1 to here, getting towards the end of the second period. I'm sure he's not pleased that Sheldon keeps in the penalty box, but uh, all in all, his teams are playing great today. Well, Sheldon keeps in the box, and we also have a penalty to Number five, Sean Griffin as well. Now that came on an earlier stoppage, so Griffin has 153 remaining, and Keefe is showing two minutes. So the Majors power play wiped out. Jonathan Schill, hard shot for the blue line. Bateman looking for the rebound, but Ryan Walsh came back to pick it up. Here's Walsh over the line, shot blocked. Pinizano to the net, Pinizano shooting. Crookshank is down, but the puck into the corner. And the front axe will skate it out to center. That was a bobbler. Michael Zygamanis to the line. Has some time. Hard shot. Deflects wide. Following up on the play is Aaron Franson. Gets a shot off uh, Zygamanis. Another shot, but after the horn had sounded. So after two periods of play, the Majors lead by a score of 4-1. to one. Just recapping those penalties for you. Griffin off for high sticking. And Sheldon Keefe called for We've the got slash. A, got a bit of a melee down in the corner. Well, we have Jason Pinizzato taking a shot at one of the Kingston players. So the Kingston player has a good grip on him. And this is now breaking up. Jonathan Schill, Michael Zygamanis skating away. Eric Braff in there as well. So that little melee has dispersed for the score of the Majors 4 in the front X1. Let's go downstairs to Mike DeJean. And a little bit of the rough stuff may carry over in the, into the third period here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The Majors looking good for their third straight win. They're one period of, uh, away from that. They lead the Kingston Frontenacs 4-1 to one after 40 minutes of play. We'll be back with more on Majors hockey after this.
and welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens. The Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs 4-1 to one after two periods of play. We're still waiting for our intermission guest, Mark Popovic, to join us right now. But first, let's talk about some news from around the league. The OHL's Player of the Week is the Barry Colts captain, Daniel Kachuk, who scored three times and added six assists last week, earning him the Player of the Week honors for the first time this season. The Mississauga native with 29 points on the season. Kachuk, of course, a first-round draft pick of the Calgary Flames two years ago. Windsor Spitfire, Spitfire's appeal of the Jeff Kugel lifetime suspension will be heard by the league November the 27th. The Spits have formally protested the ban, as uh, most people are aware by now. That brawl became uh, owned against Owen Sound on October 25th. Kugel receiving a lifetime ban for leaving the, leaving the bench and sucker punching an Owen Sound player during the melee. And back to the Barry Colts. They remain red hot at this point, edging North Bay 2-1 to one on Friday night. They picked up their ninth consecutive victory. The Colts, in fact, are unbeaten in 11 games at home and are really running away with the Central Division at this point. And now our weekly Booyar Amadoski update. Uh, the former major goaltender with three shutouts in five home starts for the Louisiana Ice Skaters of the East Coast Hockey League. In fact, Booyar has now set a new uh, uh, Louisiana Ice Skaters record with those three shutouts. The North Bay Centennials have signed overage left winger Warren Holmes, the six foot two, 205 pounder, coming over when he was released by the Oshawa Generals. Let's take a look at some of the individual scoring leaders from around the league. Harold Druken of the Plymouth Whalers, uh, he's running away with the scoring leadership at this point with 49 points in 23 games, followed by his teammate Adam Colagiacomo. Norm Milley, the former St. Michael's buzzer, with 38 points in 22 games. He's tied with Peter Sarno of, of Sarnia. There's Sheldon Keefe of the Majors with 36 points in 21 games. Plus minus leaders, it's Nick Boynton, the Washington Capitals draft pick, who the Majors will play against on Friday. He's with the Ottawa 67s, of course, plus 25 in 23 games. Followed by Campbell, Druken, Sellers, and uh, Zoltek, also of the Ottawa 67s. A rookie scoring in the OHL, Sheldon Keefe of these very same St. Michael's Majors with 36 points in 21 games. Followed by Denny Schmidtke of the Barry Colts. He's been hot lately, 15 goals in 23 games. There's 15-year-old Jason Spezza of Brampton, followed by Vasicek and Bootland of the Barry Colts as well. Well, we'll be back with more on St. Michael's Majors Hockey. The Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs by a score of 4-1 to one after 40 minutes of play. We'll be back after this. And coming up the next game on Majors Hockey, Friday from the nation's capital against those very tough Ottawa 67s, Friday, November 27th, a 7.30 face-off. And joining us now, one of the goal scorers tonight, Mark Popovic of the Majors, the fine young rookie, the first-round draft pick of the Majors, in fact, this year. Mark, can you give us an idea why, uh, why you're playing so well these days? Um, I think it just, I got my confidence now. I went around the league once, so after all, I also broke my hand at the beginning. I'm just getting back. I'm back to 100%. I'm just feeling comfortable out on the ice. I guess it helps, too, that, uh, that Mike's really been putting you in on, on the power play. He's really given you a, almost a leadership role, which is almost unheard of for, for someone who's just a rookie in the league. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Most underagers don't get the, time I, uh, the ice time that I do. And the opportunities when you get the ice time, just they open right up. So it's great to have the ice time. What's the key now? I mean, you guys have won two straight, uh, you know, a period away from your third straight win. What are, what are you doing differently this weekend that maybe uh, you haven't been doing in the last few games? I think it's a positive attitude. Everyone knows the rules, and everyone's doing what they, what they do best. And I think if we keep doing this, we're going to keep winning. And I guess having a couple of uh, well, sort of veteran goaltenders back there really helps, too. It gives you guys a bit of confidence. Oh, definitely. They can play the puck. You know they're going to stop it. You know you have someone who can stop the puck behind you, which gives you confidence, too. Mark, what about the third period? Do you expect these guys, uh, Kingston, to come out flying? A little bit of rough stuff there in the second period at the end of the second. What do you expect in the third? Um, I know they're going to come out and try to play... Uh, a rough game, but we just can't go down to their level. We have to keep going, keep pushing, and play our game. Great. Good luck in the third. Thanks a lot. That's Majors defenseman Mark Popovic with one goal so far tonight. He may also get credited with another one he was telling me before we did the interview. The Majors leading the Kingston Frontenacs 4-1 to one after two periods of play. We'll be back with more on Majors hockey after this. Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens. The Majors leading Kingston by a score of 4-1. to one. 
Well, we all know that a lot of NHL scouts are covering the OHL. There's a lot down here at Maple Leaf Gardens today watching today's game between Kingston and St. Michael's. The Ottawa 67s, one of the best teams in the league, so it's no surprise the scouts are following them very closely. With more, we go to this story from OHL This Week. Thousands of eyes are watching your every move, but the important eyes for players in the OHL are the ones of the NHL scouts. How does a player get noticed? Tim Murray is a direct scout for the Florida Panthers, and he says there are a few things that initially stand out. Um, I think the first couple things you look at are skating, size, those are the first things that catch your attention and then after that there's the skill factor in the hockey sense but right off the bat, it, you know, if you come out to the rink and you're looking at four or five different players, if he's a big guy and he, and he can skate, he's the first guy that catches your attention. Being a scout isn't easy but Murray says looking to the future is the key to scouting. Well, I think that's a big part of our job. I think that's what makes a good scout is a guy that can project. So you might see the kid play and they get beat 10-8, 10-2, three nights in a row. You shouldn't be worried about how he's playing that night. It's what you project him to be as a 24, 25-year-old on your hockey team. One player that caught the attention of Florida scout Tim Murray is Ian Jacobs. I never really heard much. Like I heard through my agent that they, they like my size, that, that I can skate good for a tall guy. And I like that I, I had the hands and the skill. So you got to be strong for sure. That's one of the biggest things. Like it's 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 a big step, but the thing is, it's the strongness and just be pre prepared and just work hard all the time. The 67s have a few players like Jacobs that have been drafted, but are back with Ottawa to polish their skills for the NHL. The players agree your skills are great, but hard work turns heads. Just be, be consistent. Uh, every game come out as hard as you can and, uh, and people see it that everyone's, everyone's watching and you're always being watched and if you, if you play your game, work hard and do the little things, uh, it'll be, it'll, you'll be noticed. All hockey kids have dreams of playing in the NHL, but Seamus Kotick, a player looking to get noticed this year, says aspirations don't come without hard work. When you're a little boy, you do a lot of dreaming and uh, Dreaming doesn't really become reality, so now you got to put forth that dream, and uh, a lot of hard work goes behind it, uh, a lot of training, dedication, and uh, you just got to really be a doer, not a thinker, so I guess that's really the only difference. Brian Kilray knows what scouts look for. He's seen players go on to the NHL, but he's also been to the NHL as a player and a coach. He says to get noticed and take the next step to the pros takes skills, but also a lot of dedication. Well, they all have to be hard workers. I mean, uh, no one's going to make it without it. Uh, I don't think people give the National Hockey League enough credit. It's a tough league, it's a strong league, and it's a fast league. And unless you're prepared to play and give and take, uh, you're not going to make it. But uh, the ones that do make it, uh, they make it because they're talented, and they've applied hard work with their talent and they've kept a good attitude to the point where they know what they want. Murray finishes by saying size and speed are wasted if you don't have heart. I mean, everybody's seen it. You've seen it a lot where the big, talented guy who doesn't play hard doesn't make it. And a smaller kid with less talent that, you know, works his uh, rear end off every night, he, you know, those are the kids you want to have on your team. Size and speed catch the scout's eye, but players, coaches, and scouts agree that hard work is what will get you to the NHL. Reporting from Ottawa, I'm Zach Martin for OHL This Week. And we'll take a look at the Ottawa 67s this week, as mentioned, when the majors play them. Let's go upstairs for a look at the two majors goals from second period play with Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks, Mike. The majors going ahead 4-1 in that second period. Glenn, let's take a look at both of those goals. The first, the 3-1 goal scored by Sheldon Keefe. Uh, great goal by Sheldon Keefe. Good hard work as all this paid off. Kenny Krupp allowed to come right out from the corner. Michelle Keefe there just to pick up the rebound and send it upstairs and uh, put them ahead 3-1. to one. And here's a great move here on the, from the third goal. Ryan Barnes strips the puck away from uh, Zygamanis, turns the Jets on and goes back the other way. Heads up play here as he takes the puck in and around, pretending he's going behind the net, but he pulls out in front, tries to jam it in. And that, uh, that caused some havoc as Sheldon Keefe and uh, Mark Popovic right there. Mark Popovic uh, sliding in his second goal of the game. Well, Brian Barnes was given credit for the goal, and uh, Mark Popovic seems to think he got it. And as we heard from, in the intermission with uh, Mike DeJong, Popovic feels uh, they may give it to him. But for the time being, Ryan Barnes credited with that goal, and I thought Ryan Barnes did a great job working the defenseman, Brett Ormond, and heading in front. 4-1 to score the Kingston Frontenacs trailing the St. Michael's Majors. Let's go back downstairs to Mike DeJong. 
And let's take a look at our next game on the Fan 590 involving these very same St. Michael's Majors against the Mississauga Ice Dogs Saturday, November 29th, next Saturday at 1.30 from Maple Leaf Gardens. Well, the Majors will try to extend their winning streak to three games with third period action. That's up next on Majors Hockey after this break. And welcome back to Majors Hockey. Let's go upstairs to Tim and Glenn for the third period face-off. Thanks, Mike. As we get ready for third period play, we still have penalties on the board as Sean Griffin showing a minute 23 remaining in his penalty. Michael Zygamanis has two full minutes to serve as a result of the melee at the end of the second period. And Sheldon Keefe showing one minute and 30 seconds for the Majors. So the front acts with three skaters to the Majors four. Majors are on the power play. Tim Hoffey along with Glenn Lowe's, and we're joined in the broadcast booth by the Majors assistant coach, Len Chittle, who assists Mike Feudal along with Mark Osborne. Osborne working the bench with Feudal and Glenn in the stands. Puck shot into the Kingston zone. Kenny Karoop in the corner for the Majors. Majors setting up his power play as Karoop has its side of the net. Majors with the four on three, back to Popovic. Popovic fakes, finds Karoop, Karoop to the net. Karoop with room, shot and knocked down in front and deflected wide by the front Frontenacs as Kingston clears the zone and the puck rolling into Toronto territory. Len, what is, what is your role with the team? Well, as a teacher at the school, my responsibilities are basically helping out home game analysis and I'm at all the practices working with uh, Coach Osborne and Coach Fuda. As the Kings of Frontenac send it back into Toronto territory, what do you what do you do specifically during during the games? You're taking notes, a pair of eyes in the stands. It's basically it's the eye in the sky routine. I go down between periods, to try to give the kids some positive feedback on the things they do well, as long as things that they can correct on. Uh, it's been great this weekend, giving the kids a ton of positive stuff because it's easy to find some positive stuff when you're winning two, three games on a weekend. And the majors looking very good this afternoon. Shot off the back of the net by. That was number two, Mark Hines from the off wing. As the major power play is now over, the now it's back on again as the Keefe penalty is over. So briefly, the front necks were at even strength. 23 seconds remaining in the Zygamanis penalty. Glenn, the, uh, uh, the job of sitting up in the stands and, 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 and reviewing the play, a lot different than behind the bench. You see a lot, a lot, a lot more... Uh, uh, behind the scenes stuff that you don't see when you're behind the bench, isn't that true? Well, you have to be responsible for uh, their team's PK and PP, so you can bring that information down to Coach Osborne and uh, Coach Fuda so they can make some adjustments with their personnel. So that, that's important, trying to find some breakdowns or faults in, in top players on their team. And this is a good line they have out here now, and the only way you can beat these guys is you've got to play, you got to be out outsmarting them and outstrengthening them in the corner, that's for sure. And, and credit to the majors, you've done that so far the first two periods. You've shut these guys down, essentially, and uh, the uh, the majors are playing very confident today, uh, and I think, I think a lot of that comes from the two wins on the uh, on the Friday and Saturday back-to-back. -back. There's no doubt that uh, a couple of wins, even though we got outshot down in Kitchener, uh, all the guys played well, and uh, goaltending was a difference there, and that happened in Mississauga when we were outshot, but uh, battled hard yesterday and continuing to work hard here. Hopefully we'll come on here with a W. Nice hit by Michael Oliveira and Jason Pinizzato. Pinizzato is back up as he brings it over the line. Sean Griffin forces him wide. And Michael Oliveira back of the Kingston net. Michael Oliveira, second leading scorer for the Frontenacs. Right wing from Mike Zygamanis. And here's that dangerous line Len was referring to. Oliveira, Zygamanis, and Jonathan Schill as Oliveira was stood up by Chris Boucher at the major blue line. Big time hit there by Chris Boucher. Nice to see him getting physical. There's another big hit by Brent Mulder in the corner as Mike Fuda giving Brent Mulder some ice here. There's a chance to the net as the Kingston player ends up in the crease. Dwayne Bateman down. Now he's back up. And the Major is fighting out to center. Nathan Tennant's falling as Coach Larry Mavity giving some of his rookie blue liners some ice time. We saw Ian Turner on the ice. Nathan Tennant taking a shift number four. So Coach Larry Mavity stretching the bench. DJ Miracle right side. Miracle right wing working on Moriarty. Moriarty has them all tied up. And he'll force Miracle into the boards. Moriarty still working on Miracle and finally just throws him to the ice. And I think that will cost the Majors. Moriarty may be overly exuberant there, Len. Uh, uh, Gerald had a good uh, a good exchange there earlier in the game when he took uh, 
one of their guys with a few more offensive points than Gerald does. So Gerald found a good role there. It was nice to see him take someone to the box that uh, may be hurting us at the other end of the rink. Well, let's see if someone does indeed accompany Gerald to the penalty box. Is that is that your take on it? Are there two of them going? I don't know. I think Moriarty is going to get called for uh, throwing Miracle to the ice. <laughs> Now the uh, handling, they call it. Len, the majors have added a few new faces to the lineup in the last few weeks. Uh, how is the team adjusting to that? How are the kids getting along? Uh, the kids are getting along great. It's a close-knit group uh, with a new goaltender duel coming in. Uh, uh, they played well, so it's easy for kids to uh, gather around them and support them. As long as uh, everyone in the team keeps doing that, uh, you know, positive things will result. There hasn't been any negative uh, feedback by any of the players. Uh, they're working at our hard at practice, trying to keep everything together. So two minutes for roughing the call on Gerald Moriarty. Kingston on the power play. Griffin lets fly. Jamie Young has scored. And the Kingston front next score on the power play. They cut the Majors lead to 4-2. Jamie Young, first round draft pick on the Kings of Front Axle last year, connecting. You see limited ice this afternoon, but capitalizing there. Shot from the point, knocked down in front. Jamie Young on the doorstep, puts the rebound past Dwayne Bateman. Well executed power play from the Kings of Front Axle, making sure the puck gets on net, and uh, unfortunately, Bateman couldn't cover up the rebound. And number 10, uh, Mr. Young, there to pick up the rebound and put his first in, first goal in. Jamie Young perfectly positioned on the play, and Bateman had absolutely no chance after making the initial save. Jamie Young, six foot two oh four from Thunder Bay, Ontario, picked up his first goal. So congratulations to Jamie Young. He's had a difficult adjustment to the OHL what with injuries, but. We have a scuffle back there. That Sean Griffin and Ryan Barnes at the Kingston blue line, and Barnes is down with Griffin standing over him. It wasn't much of a bout. Uh, you know, Ryan Barnes lost his footing there, and quickly the two of them went to the ice. Uh, Ryan Barnes can't be happy about losing his footing. Uh, they they both uh, agreed to go toe to toe there, but uh, Sean Griffin with a smirk on his face, like that uh, ah, guy. Uh, maybe next time we'll go at her, and uh, you won't fall down. Well, Ryan Barnes was drafted by the Red Wings. Sheldon Keith, Mark Popovic, obviously very talented. Those three guys, I, I think, have really good shots playing the NHL. Uh, right from uh, the get-go, Mark Popovic in camp, we had a skating instructor come in, and he was doing all these drills, and no one else on the team could do it except for Popovic. His skating is one of the best on our team and probably in the league if we had to compare kids on skating ability. He's amazing. And of course, Kiefer with his drive to the net, even in practice, Coach Fuda has to blow the whistle two or three times for him to stop doing the drill he's doing. Uh, this kid works hard every every second he's on the ice. Sheldon Keefe will have to overcome the the size bias. He's only five foot nine. And that, uh, the book will not be well. The, the full evaluation of Sheldon Keefe will not be made until he can proves he can score the next level. That's sort of the nature of being a smallest player. There's always that doubt, can they take it to the next level? They sort of give the bigger guys the benefit of the doubt. He definitely works hard on and off the ice. I mean, uh, they probably count out Theron Fleury and uh, Dino Cicerelli. And, you know, and Dino broke his, his femur there. He wasn't supposed to play too many games. And uh, here's Keeper. I don't know why he's not broken any bones yet, because he just plays with reckless abandon all the time he's out there. I was, I was just going to mention that, Len, that a lot of times the uh, the pros will also look to see if uh, Sheldon, being a rookie this year, can last a full season without being injured, and if he's versatile enough to uh, to make it through to the next year and step it up a notch. Uh, that's going to be a big test for, for Kiefer and for the rest of the team. Obviously, we're trying to support him and uh, protect him as much as we can, but he still has to battle in there every game. Well, as a member of his broad broadcast crew and, uh, and as a fan of St. Mike's, I, uh, I love watching Sheldon Keefe work his magic with Ryan Barnes. We have a penalty being signaled and not clear at this point who it is against. Mark Looks to me like it's number two from the uh, Kingston, uh, Aaron Franson. And Franson wants a piece of Sean Cation. Cation will skate away, being here's directed the, away by the lines. Here's a penalty here, Aaron Franson comes in. Basically grabs a hold of Kenny Krupp and just slams him to the boards. It's a checking from behind penalty. Very dangerous. We've seen uh, numerous times how many, how much that can affect uh, uh, the flow of the game and uh, the injuries that can result from something like that are uh, usually pretty severe. So good call by uh, by referee Mark Hicks. So the Majors leading this game by a score of 4-2 will get another power play opportunity. They have scored how many goals in the power play this evening? They have scored, well, the one by Sheldon Keefe, one by Sean Cation. So the 
Power play has struck twice for the majors this afternoon, three times yesterday against Mississauga, a couple of times at Kitchener, so it just keeps clicking away. No doubt power play is, uh, well, it's second overall in the league, and uh, after today, they may move up to number one. Mark Popovic off the draw, shot right on, Crookshank the save as the Frontenacs clear the zone, and here's Oliveira, right wing, puts a little spin move on Cannon to the net, rebound, shot, and big save by Dwayne Bateman with Michael Zygamanis closing in shorthanded. A little hot dogging there by Oliveira, nice move. Well, it worked, it was a hot dog kind of move, the spin move on the veteran Jason Cannon, who is a natural defenseman. The Majors moving him up to forward this year because of the surplus of big bodies they had on defense, but Cannon was, was beat there by Oliveira. You know who's mastered that spin move, don't you? Who's mastered? Who's mastered that spin move? Is that the Savardian spin around? Yep, Dennis yeah. Savard, yeah. You know, Charlie Stevens had moves like that as well. He'd occasionally show it. Poor Charlie getting a rough ride in the uh, latest edition of the Rink Rat magazine this week. Mark Popovic on the right point. Takes it to the center. High shot. And that goes off the glass. Here's Cation following up. Cation back in the net. Cation. It's centering, here's a chance, Boucher to the net, Boucher shooting and Crookshank a couple of kick saves as Boucher found room and took it right to the crease. Now Boucher back of the net for Pinizzato, shot in again, Crookshank the save as the two former Barry Colts connecting here on the major power play. Full credit for the major's power play, uh, not normally the unit that you see out of the power play full time, and uh, they move the puck around like as if it was a, uh, a natural thing. Well, 45 seconds remaining in the penalty to Branson, and here's the Oliveira spin move as he drags it to the net. Look at Zygamatis, he had a shot, but nice play by the trailer. Oh. We see Pinizzato handling the puck very well. Back to Boucher, Pinizzato. Getting a nice shot away, and uh, Crookshank quick to cover the puck up, especially when you got those majors surrounding the net. Uh, Curtis Crookshank said a fairly steady game and goal for the Kings of Primax tonight. Puck shot into the majors zone. The majors still on the power play. Jonathan Schill in on the four check, momentarily confusing the issue. Now Mark Popovic will get a left wing for Sheldon Keefe. Here's Keefe barreling down the off wing. Keefe to the line. Keith driving it at force wide, almost tucked it in the corner as the major player comes barreling in after the fact. That was Kenny Karoop and Jason Cannon in there. Now Keith to Cation, hot oh. shot scores! Sean Cation lets it fly from the blue line, and the majors power play again. Boy, what a power play, 5-2 majors. And what a game Sean Cation's having. Yeah, he's a he, he's so good with the puck. He can read the ice, he just slides it over and brings it in and shoots. He has to do that more often. Let's get some traffic in front. It's still a three-on-two battle once the puck gets through the net. And there's the traffic. You know, I, I would have thought that was the first goal of the game because that's exactly how the last goal was going in. He brought it across towards the middle, teed it up and found the sweet spot of the stick and put it in the exact same spot as he scored his first goal. Sure, it sure looks like a replay from the first one. <laughs> Congratulations to Sean Cation having a great game today. Well, Mike Feuda's got to be pleased with the big guns of the blue line. Cation with a couple of goals. Mark Popovic has a goal. Has two goals this afternoon. Cation has two goals, yes. And uh, Popovic with the uh, one goal. So a blue line accounting for three of the five major goals. And yet again, another power play goal. That's eight power play goals for the majors in the last two games. Maybe the majors power play could give the Maple Leaf power play a few less. <laughs> it's good to see Kenny Creek come right back after that hit from behind. And uh, he's been a big part of his last three games. Certainly has. Harold Thompson stood up the blue line by Chris Cava. Majors Ryan Wallace, the drop for Pinizzano, looking for Moriarty. He felt sorry for Gerald, has yet to score a goal as a major in two years. Moriarty tied up along the boards. Gerald did get that one big goal in Sudbury, so he at least has that one OHL goal. This could be a dis defensive strategy. I don't know. Maury's out there. Uh, he's going to helm the puck if it comes loose, I'm sure. Well, they've got Moriarty playing up front is what they're doing. Moriarty's playing on the forward line with Pinizzato and Ryan Walsh. I know you're not talking to Mike Feuda right now, but uh, any uh, <laughs> any reason for that strategy uh, that you can think of, Len? Uh, maybe uh, we need another left winger, and uh, Gerald said, put his first hand up and said, I'll go left wing. I'll go anyway. <laughs> well, he's the kind of guy that'll go through the wall for you. Well, Majors, uh, they do have seven defensemen, so it's and they're the short one forward, so... They have that flexibility to move a defenseman up front. Moriarty did play, uh, he was playing some forward in Barry last weekend when the majors were shorthanded due to the suspensions. Gives you some muscle up front as well, big body. Mark Hines, left point, hard shot knocked down by DJ Miracle, and Miracle will skate that off and head to the bench. 
11-25 remaining in the third period. The Majors with a three-goal lead. They lead the Frontenacs 5-2. The Frontenacs have been their nemesis for two years here in this league. Jonathan Schill shooting and that's Dwayne Bateman covering up by the, the Kingston Frontenacs, not the powerhouse they were last year, but as we discussed at the outset, the Frontenacs with that 8-1 record overall over two years against the Majors. So the Majors putting a little dent in the head-to-head -head record this afternoon, pres presuming they hang on for the win. Len, I, uh, we've, been, we've, been, we've been mentioning a couple of times the, uh, the Dwayne Bateman uh, ritual of skating around when the puck stops or the play stops. Uh, what, are the, what are the thoughts amongst the teammates and, uh, and uh, any, any, any uh, reason behind, the, uh, behind that, uh, uh, that skating around? He's, he's very active. I, I, I kind of like it myself. Uh, it forces him to keep, keep everything moving in his body. Uh, he clears his mind, I'm sure, as he clears out of the front of the net. As long as he gets back in there before the face-off <laughs> drops, I think everybody's okay with it. <laughs> Well, I noticed in Kitchener the other night, Friday, he was stretching it almost to the top of the faceoff circle, sort of expanding his, his zone, his wandering zone. Zigamanis behind the net, wrap around, and Bateman read that all the way. Jason Penizzato clears it over the blue line, puck loose at center, but Brett Ormond gets to it and sends it down into Toronto territory. Play whistled down on, what the heck was that, offside? Offside. Too long offside? Glenn, the uh, Majors have a really busy weekend coming up. Uh, you're off in Ottawa Friday night. You're, uh, you're back in, uh, in, in, the, in the Gardens uh, playing at Barry 1 o'clock on Saturday. And then a, uh, another, uh, another meeting between the Ice Dogs and yourselves on Sunday. Uh, any, uh, any strategies to try to keep the, uh, try to keep the, uh, the players fresh for, uh, for all three games? Well, Coach Fuda mentioned that this, this was supposed to be a, a minimum five-point weekend for us. And uh, we weren't going to be satisfied with the five or six. So... I don't know what he's going to put up on the point board come this coming weekend. We're playing some good teams, so therefore we got to uh, we got to battle hard and, and try to keep. If we can get a steal a point from Ottawa, that would be great, I'm sure. But uh, the kids are going to come with that hard work attitude, and, and when the chips land, we'll we'll take it as long as we work hard. Here's some hard work from Mike Zigamanis, gloving it down, bringing it to the line, but stood up nicely by the major defenseman Mark Hines. Huck back of the net for Oliver and front for Zigamanis took a swipe at it. Now Simpson comes into the play. Roughs up Jonathan Schill. Schill has lost his lid and gets a little shot from Simpson out for the fact. Simpson gets away with that as the Majors bring it back right wing. Here's Matt Ellis. Ellis with the shot. Flex high and bounces off the glass. Simpson knocked down in the corner by big number 33, Eric Braff. Matt Ellis battling along the boards. Kenny Karoop in there as well. Simpson trying to freeze it. Moriarty steps up. And the Majors will force the face off. We'll take a break with the Majors leading the case of Fondax by a score of 5 to 2. Well, we're back in Maple Leaf Gardens here. Tim Havy, Glenn Lowe's uh, with the uh, little altercation going on there between the uh, between whistles there. We've got uh, Ryan Barnes, Ryan Barnes and uh, number 5. John Griffin, John Griffin uh, back in the box. And uh, I mentioned when they went to the box in the first, uh, the first round, here's a replay here. They, uh, they pretty much just wanted to toe off and, and tee up and, 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 and go where they didn't go before. Ryan Barnes losing his footing on the first uh, the first try. And uh, I think I think I mentioned to you that uh, the look in Sean Griffin's eye was, hey, buddy, we'll do it again if we can. And uh, they certainly tried to take that opportunity. And, uh, referee, he uh, put him in the box for a uh, for a, uh, another penalty. You know, Glenn, I like Charlie Stevens. Spent a lot of time with his team last year. Rode the buses with him and traveled all over Ontario and parts of the United States. And Charlie Stevens, a big friendly kid, as a 16-year-old last year, and uh, still a big friendly guy as a 17-year-old, but under a bit of pressure this year. It's his draft year. There are clearly influences from his uh, representation, the Bobby Orr group, Darren Ferris. And, and uh, it's all water on the bridge, but Charlie Stevens has moved on, and he's playing in Guelph and trying to... Uh, established himself as a bona fide OHLer and looking to get drafted as high as he can in the NHL. But all that aside, Majors really, uh, have, that deal has turned out well for them. Ryan Barnes has just been a, a real impact player for the, for the Majors. He plays a perfect and scored goals and Red Wings, and I can see why they drafted him as high as they did. Well, a uh, player like Ryan Barnes is always a, a welcome feature to any hockey team. Just Hot because he's working here, Glenn, in the crease. Oh, says, oh, there's Bateman kicking it away, and Aaron Franson follows up. Flurry of action there in the major zone as the Frontenac seemed a little fired up after that Griffin scuffle with Ryan Barnes. Yeah, as I was saying, Ryan Barnes is a hard worker, and as you said, very diversified player. Can do it both ways, and he's a uh, he's also an NHL draft pick, which in, in itself brings a lot of experience for the younger players to, uh, to try to take off of. Well, the Char Charlie Stevens situation, a bit of an enigma. You look at him on one side, 
one hand, uh, the, the talent level is evident. He's very smooth with the puck. He's got some moves. He's got the size. Seems to have everything there, all the potential. The upside is very obvious. However, he hasn't, uh, well, put up the numbers, performed the level of, of other 17-year-olds of his peer group. So the dilemma for the scouts, do you take a chance or do you go with someone that's maybe proved themselves a little more? And I tend to think the scouts are going to be conservative. I, I, I don't know that Charlie will go in the first round. And, and let's, let's, let, let's give Charlie the benefit of the doubt here, too. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not even halfway through the season. And, um, you know, what's, uh, what's, uh, what's happening so far may not be in Charlie's best interest in terms of uh, his, his performance or lack thereof. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens in, uh, after Christmas. 12 Storm leaving the Plymouth Whalers. Charlie Stevens team 3 1 in the third period. North Bay leading Kitchener 5 2. That is a final for the Centennials. Sault Ste. Marie leading the Brampton Battalion 1 0 in the Peterborough Peets. Have defeated the Sunbury Wolves by a score of 4 3. But back to Charlie Stevens. I think the key with him is if he finishes strong, if he really lives up to his potential or even close to it towards the end of the year, that will work in his favor, and you could see him drafted very high, but that's an if. He's got to deliver, and I think that's what the scouts are waiting for, to, to see the real Charlie Stevens. It may not manifest itself this year. He may be a bit of a late bloomer. So, so the dilemma is, do you take a, do you risk a first-round pick on him or, or leave him for a later round? And, and that's very true, and he's playing with a team, the Guelph Storm, that, uh, that they have a lot of talent on that team as well, so he's not going to be the uh, central figure there. Here's Jason Cannon for Sheldon Keefe. Keefe trying to drag it past Curtis Crookshank and almost got the job done. Great heads up play there by uh, Sheldon Keefe and uh, Sean Cation. Puck fired into the Kingston zone, knocked down, 825 remaining in this game. And here's a nice bit of speed from Andrew Ionero. Ionero to the line, trying to drag around Cava. He caught Cava in the face with a stick. Cava is down. And Mike Goff takes a run at Ion Arrow back of the net, and Ion Arrow gives it right back to him. But Ion Arrow caught Cava with the stick. We see Kevin Bratt on the ice tending to Chris Cava, who caught the high stick from Andrew Ion Arrow. It'll be interesting to see what the referee calls here, too, because by the rules, whether it's an accident or it's done on purpose, when a stick hits the face, that should be a high sticking penalty called. Um, you know, uh, I'm sure Ion Arrow didn't mean to do it. He was just trying to get around Cava. But here it is here. Cava tries to stand him up here. And the, the stick gets clearly knocks the helmet right up. That's a clear penalty that uh, that uh, Hicks is actually uh, taking Iron Arrow to the box now. So he saw it as much as everybody else did here on the screen. No brainer high stick, but it's also very very careless use of the stick. And uh, you, you saw Chris Cava there rubbing his mouth. Uh, players now uh, uh, forced to wear mouth guards, Tim, as part of a uh, regulation throughout the league. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he's thankful that he's got one in his mouth right now. Well, Glenn, excuse my naivete, but I don't understand why anyone would not want to wear mouth guards. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have to take you back to when I played. Uh, uh, because the mouth guard coming into a, uh, 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 going, putting a mouth guard in your mouth, uh, today they're, they're a lot better. Uh, before, uh, when I played, the, uh, the mold of the mouth guard wasn't quite to the perfection that it is now and, and, and often was very, uh, very awkward in your mouth and you, uh, you sometimes interrupted your breathing pattern because, the, uh, because it didn't fit well enough. You see Chris Cava. Got a bit of a cut in the inside of his lip there. I see a little blood on his hand, and he's just gonna, he's gonna have uh, Kevin Brad have a look at it and see if it's anything serious. Our producer Kerry B pointing out it, it's also difficult to talk with a mouth guard. And some of these players like to talk it up during the game. Well, they like to chirp at uh, at each other, that's for sure. And uh, um, and and as I said, you know, a lot of it is, is a lot of it's a uh, uh, an, an awkwardness in the mouth of having the mouth guard. But as I said, they come a long way with those things, and it's good to see that they've uh, they put that rule in place. So chirping friendly mouth guards now the order of the day in the Ontario Hockey League, and that is important. Two minutes for Rocket for the Major, number 13, Michael Guff. Two for Rocket, time 11.44. So Guff has got two for roughing. Number 12, Ian Arrow for the Major, number 13, Guff. Two minutes for roughing, time 11.44. Ian Arrow not penalized for that, uh, for that high stick at all. He was actually penalized for the, uh, for the uh, uh, little altercation between him and Guff behind the net after the play. Double roughing call. Here's a shot wide, rebound, shot score, Brent Mulder! Brent Mulder with his first goal as a St. Michael's Major, and the Majors extend the lead to four goals. Great, great effort by Kenny Group and uh, Brent Mulder. Uh, Kenny Group picking up another assist here on this one, I'm sure. Um, both players are going to fight for the puck right around the blue line. Finally, Kenny Group took off with it with, with Brent Mulder on the side. We see Kenny Group teeing it up. Pulled the shot. Thank God for the for the high uh, for the high shots. Came off the glass. Crookshank out of the net, not in position to take that rebound. Mulder picks up his first uh, for the majors this year. Nice he's got to be happy. 
Nice touch on that Brent Holder kid. Clearly, uh, Mark Napier went out and got him from the Belleville Bulls for that scoring touch as he puts the, uh, puts the backhand shot past Curtis Crookshank. We're just having fun at, uh, with Brent Holder. Brent Holder, a big body up front, not known for a scoring touch, but a, but a nice goal for Brent Holder. His first as a major, the big, strong guy acquired from the Belleville Bulls for future considerations this year. And he's a, uh, Brent Mulder, I mean, you got to give him full, full credit. He doesn't get a lot of ice time. And when he's out here today, he takes full advantage of, uh, of, of the opportunity given the ice time. And when you do that, and you do that consistently, you find yourself getting a lot more ice time, Tim. Well, make no mistake on that goal. Curtis Crookshank uh, had a shot at it. He wasn't a no-brainer goal. It wasn't one of those wide-open net goals. But he got the backhand pass. Curtis Crookshank got it over the arm. And the Majors lead by a score of 6-2. to two. And Kenny Karoop continues to impress. Kenny Karoop has developed into a full-fledged OHL frontline player. Seven-game point streak coming in. He's got a couple of points tonight. Majors net has been dislodged. We'll take a break with the Majors leading the front next by a score of 6-2. to two. Kings of front next have incurred a penalty. Number 16, Brett Cloutier is in the box. So the Majors will go on the power play. There's a little bit of a scuffle that broke out as we went to break. So Majors on the power play again. They have connected three times on the power play this afternoon. And let's see what happens here. Cloutier is not immune to the penalty box today. It's his third visit, I think. Cross-checking on Brett Cloutier. Sheldon Keefe to Sean Cation. Here's Cation back for Keefe. Leaves it for Kenny Karoop. Kenny Karoop turning. Kenny Karoop playing with incredible confidence and poise. Cation lets fly, deflected high, and over the glass. Again, Cation trying to tee that puck up again and uh, try to pop another one, make it his third for the day. Uh, exact same kind of goals. Very, uh, very strong on the blue line for the majors today, uh, Sean Cation. So Sean Cation, Mark Popovic, both having standout games for the majors this afternoon. Sheldon Keith, as usual, spectacular self. Kenny Karoop playing very well. Let, let's, let, let's not ignore the, uh, the fact that, uh, that we've got uh, uh, great players today. We're going to have three stars uh, with Mike DeJong at the, uh, at the end of the game. And uh, I don't know if I was to speculate. I have to say uh, Sean Cash and Papa Vic and Keith, uh, maybe Kenny Karoop. Certainly a lot of, lot of talent on this Majors team. And, and the uh, uh, three rookies, Sheldon Keith, Karoop, or Sheldon Keith, Sean Cash and Mark Papa Vic have been leading the way today. Sheldon Keefe and Sean Cation, 18-year-old rookies, both played in Caledon last year. Played in Quinty the year before. So they've been together for at least three years. Here's Popovic back of the net. Fights off the four-check from number seven, Michael Zygamanis, as Sheldon Keefe will take it right wing. Sheldon Keefe working to the net. Shot right on as Curtis Crookshank looking for the rebound. And Sheldon Keefe just slugged Jonathan Schill. Sheldon Keefe hit him with a right, and all hell is broken out now as well a restored order and Nathan Tennant takes a shot at Cation and Moriarty involved and Moriarty goes after the goalie Curtis Crookshank oh Eric Flanson is wailing on Moriarty Cavins in there as well we've got a melee going on here this has turned into a bit of a downy brook and I don't know what started it but Kenny Garoop is being dragged by Jonathan Schill you can see Garoop hanging on to Jonathan Schill in the in the crease area we've got several Scuffles going on. Cation and Nathan Tennant are swinging away to the left of the net. We have Christian back in the net with Gerald Moriarty. There's the main bout now. Cation and Nathan Tennant. Got to give this one to Sean Cation. He's already he's already dinged him three times. Yeah, they're swinging. Really he's he's dinged him three times on the uppercuts and, and not not hurt his hand on the visor. I'll tell you where that all stemmed from. That all stemmed from. Well, the, it's still going. And Moriarty and Christian. Christian took another run and Gerald Moriarty. So let's wait for things to cool down a bit and. Crookshank is trying to get the left free. Uh, a couple of his players have more to help. Michael Sigamanis and Chris Kavov squared off. Let's look back to the net. There's two of them on. Pomovic and Karup have Jonathan Schill tied up. And now Moriarty and Moriarty and Crookshank have been separated. And uh, Chris Kava is being basically shoved into the penalty box. Uh, Moriarty's in the box. Now Kava's in the box. Barnes and Guff were already there. Now they're bringing Cash into the box. Well, as now we'll take a look at how it started. Uh, so I truly down. believe that started with a chop at center ice on Sheldon Keith from the from the Ottawa or from the Kingston player. There's a shot on goal. We see yeah. Moriarty going yeah. to the net. Moriarty yeah. point forward. Yeah. Keith is down. Keith is down. And if you see here, that's the player that he that he that he struck. He, pound, he pounded Jonathan Schill. 
We're not sure why, and now they're going at it in the, in the box. penalty box. They're, Gerald Moriarty is incensed. He just threw something at number five, Sean Griffin, and Griffin has lost it. Griffin is trying to climb over the glass. The Garden security has intervened, and they're holding Sean Griffin in the penalty box. There's a fan there trying to restore order as well. The players are well separated, so nothing likely to come of this, but that is a heated exchange. Now, Sheldon Keefe clearly took exception to something. It's not like Sheldon Keefe to throw a punch like that. No, he, that he, I, he, I'm telling you that that all step, you could hear the chop at center ice when he was coming down the ice. The, uh, the case the player completely, completely a, uh, a attack. And here we see a Donnie Brook going down in the penalty box well, area. Yeah, it's, we've got security, we've got ushers trying to keep the uh, keep the fans away. Well, back, right, even back, Chris Cava, Chris Cava getting talked to from Reg Quinn. Yeah, even Settle Reg down. Quinn, the president of the team has intervened. And the best thing for the referee to do at this point, with five minutes and 59 seconds to go, would be to just call all these players that are involved in this Donnie Brook, set them to the bench for the rest of the game. It's a 6-2 game. Uh, if they're going to be on, if they're going to be offsetting penalties at five minutes apiece anyway, best thing for the referee to do is say, "Hey, buddy, go to your go to your well, dressing I, rooms and uh, and you come on out and watch the last couple minutes once you showered up." Well, I'm, I'm sure the referee will get this sorted out. Now, let, let's just get clear on the OHO rules here. First fight on the ice is a, a five-minute major, but any subsequent fights on the same stoppage result in automatic game misconducts and two-game suspension. That's so correct. That's what we'll keep it have to keep an eye out for here. If, if any of these players are deemed to have participated in second fight on the ice, and I'm sure many will be, they are looking at two games. Now, Gerald Moriarty, maybe, uh, and it's just not clear what was the first fight. It will, it will, the ref will have to determine what was the first fight, and anybody else, any other fight following that, will uh, the participants will, will pay a heavy penalty. As we see Gerald Moriarty being, being walked out and escorted into the majors dressing room now i guess what we gotta get clear on here is one got everybody so upset now clearly sheldon keith was very incensed he was down on his knees in the crease and he took a right and threw a very hard punch at jonathan chill and clearly he had a reason what do you think the reason was? i think the reason was he got chopped uh, with a heavy slash in around the center ice mark going down to the other end and uh you know the referee had already called the penalty so maybe sheldon should have maybe acted the way he did because they, they had a power play opportunity right there uh, the referee had his hand up. Uh, he was going to call the penalty, but when the play stopped uh, and he gave, and he gave the uh, he gave the case to player the shot in the head, uh, I think the goaltender then took liberty upon Sheldon Keefe, which got Moriarty all upset. And um, I think if I was going to call the penalties, I'd say that the, the original slash has to be called. I would think that the next penalty that needs to be called would be Sheldon Keefe's roughing penalty. He never took the gloves off, so I can't really see how they call him a fighting. But then from then on, it was a uh, uh, from then on you'd have to look at Chris Cava and Moriarty uh, as they. Uh, as they had their part in a bit of a brawl. All right, we'll let the officials sort this out. Let's take a break and go downstairs to Mike Dijon. Thanks very much, guys. Well, it'll be taking a few minutes to sort out all of those penalties. Let's take a look at the scoring summary so far in tonight's contest, this afternoon's contest, in fact, which the majors now lead by a score of 6-2 to two with about five and a half minutes to go in the final period. Going back to the opening period, it was Sean Cation with his first of the game, his fourth of the season from Keefe and Popovic, a power play goal at the 10-03 mark, 1-0 majors. Popovic then scored his second goal of the year to make it 2-0 from Jason Pinizzato at 16-38. Kingston got back on the board. Kluche from Ormond at the 1722 uh, mark, making it 2-1 to one after 1. The Majors increasing their lead in the second period. Kenny Karup getting that goal, his eighth of the year from Keith and Cation, another power play marker for the Majors. They are just awesome on the power play. Maybe the Leafs should get some tips from them. 926 of the second, followed by Ryan Barnes, unassisted, although that goal may go to Mark Popovic. We looked at the tape. It could, could be going either way. Didn't matter. It made it 4-2 uh, at that point, 4-1 at that point for the Majors. Then the third period, Jamie Young got one back for the Kingston front. Next from Price and Griffin on the power play at 4-10, followed by Sean Cation's fifth of the year from Keefe and Cannon at 7-08. And then uh, Brent Mulder's first as a Major from Karup and Pinizzato at 12-21. So the Majors leading at 6-2. They are on their way to their third straight win in three days. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard in Ontario Hockey League action this afternoon. Several games along with this one. Guelph leading Plymouth. There's a surprise. 3-1 for the Storm in the third period. A battle of two of the best teams in the league. A final from North Bay. The Kitchener Rangers losing again. 5-2. Peterborough leading Sudbury. Or beat Sudbury, in fact. It's a final. 4-3 for the Peets. Sault Ste. Marie leading the Battalion. 1-0. In the third period, tonight's contest, we have four more games in the OHL this evening, including 
Uh, three more this evening. In fact, Owen Sound playing at Barry. That's a 6 o'clock start. Sarnia traveling to Oshawa. And the Ice Dogs still looking for their second win of the year, taking on the always tough Ottawa 67s. Our next TV game here involving the St. Michael's Majors will, in fact, emanate out of the nation's capital. The Ottawa 67s taking on the Majors Friday, November 27th, a 7.30 faceoff from Ottawa. Should be quite a barn burner from the nation's capital. And let's take a look at some of the majors' next few games. Saturday the 28th, 1 o'clock, right here at Maple Leaf Gardens against the Colts, followed by that game in Ottawa next Friday. Then Sunday, November 29th, 1.30, against the Ice Dogs once again. And then at Mississauga, Wednesday, December 2nd, a 7.30 start from the new Hershey Center. Well, the St. Michael's Majors trying to hang on for their third consecutive victory. They lead it 6-2 over the Kingston Frontenacs. Let's go back upstairs to Tim Happy and Glenn Lowe's. Thanks, Mike, for that update. Uh, Glenn and I continuing to uh, monitor the ice as the officials continue to try and sort out the penalty situation. You see the official conversing with the off-ice official at the penalty box. Mark Napier has made his way to the penalty box area as well, the general manager of the team monitoring uh, this situation. We see Mark Napier now, and it's a bit of a distressing situation for the majors. It, it just seems, Glenn, where there's Sheldon Keefe, there, there's sparks, there's fire. He's a feisty kind of guy, and uh, he threw that punch, and that pretty well got the whole thing going, at least the uh, the Donnybrook part of it, but clearly something precipitated it, and I now see Sheldon Keefe has been escorted off the ice. One of the Garden's senior ushers, in fact, the one that looks after the Major's dressing room, has escorted Keefe off the ice, and, and, and they really didn't even let Keefe back on the ice. They took him out of the penalty box and escorted him into the corridor adjacent to the penalty box, and they're going to work him around back to the dressing room through the back route rather than letting him back on the ice. Well, the only thing that, that I could think of, that the reason they, they gave him that was a maybe an instigator uh, situation. Uh, one of the things that I do see, you see Crookshank on your screen. Uh, uh, if I'm a referee, he's out of the game. Uh, he got into a fight there, and goalie or no goalie, put the other netminder in because uh, he's, he's involved in the whole fracas himself. So Chris Cava there over the bench. Uh, waiting there patiently as the referees try to sort out what sort of penalties to uh, to give to each team. Well, the first punch that I saw was Sheldon Keefe, so if you consider that the start of a fight, anything subsequent would be second fight on the same stoppage. Now, what we'll have to, uh, what well, the referee will have to establish is what indeed was that first fight. And uh, as we've explained, any other fights that... Okay, let's try and figure out what happened. Here's Keefe. Here's, right the, here's the hack, right here. All right, now that's Nathan Tennant. Tennant stands him up. Let's see what happens. Down goes Keefe, so Keefe takes exception to that. Now there's Schill with yeah. Keefe. Schill with the cross check. Now we see Keefe punch. There's the punch on Jonathan Schill. But the gloves were on, and in my mind, I don't think a fight deems to be a fight until the gloves are dropped. Am okay. I right? That may be a roughing. Keefe is definitely guilty of roughing there, but we saw that both Tennant and Schill uh, had tied him up. Uh, not clear as to whether either of them really used the stick or slashed or what exactly they did. Well, the, the, I don't think uh, the, the, the replay didn't catch it enough because uh, uh, I did see the referee's arm go up after I heard the big whap that comes off of a uh, chop uh, that, that that was on uh, Sheldon well, Keefe. Well, that's significant. You saw a penalty called. You saw a penalty called. It was, a, it, was, it was a delayed penalty uh, that, that, that happened around the red line. Uh, the, the majors brought the puck in, controlled the play in the end, and uh, once the uh, once the uh, puck was stopped, the referee was going to take the uh, take the um, uh, penalized Kingston player off, uh, but Sheldon Keefe took exception, as we said and uh, decided to uh, punish him himself. Well, we saw a penalty box brawl. We haven't seen that in Maple Leaf Gardens this year. The, the, the situation with Sault Ste. Marie was close. Nick Jones was certainly very belligerent in the uh, penalty box that night, but uh, this was a lot more uh, a lot more of a penalty box brawl. The Kingston Frontenacs, oddly enough, got into trouble for a penalty bo box brawl with the London Knights earlier this year in which Walker McDonald came off the bench. Now, producer Kerry B tells yeah. us that we have found the hack. We'll go to the tape. There's and it's Keith. Show. It's Show. Watch this. Watch this. You can hear it right across the stadium, too. Right there. You could hear that, and he took exception to that. Well, there was a definite hack attempt there. So that, that's a good that's a good replay. That takes it further back. We're getting uh, we're getting closer to the history of this melee. I think the trick is uh, we want to go back and investigate the root cause. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting closer in our investigation. So we, we see Keith being hacked at as he started the rush. We saw Nathan Tennant hacking at him further into the Kingston zone. Schill got another piece of him. And, and, and Keith finally just said enough is enough and, 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 and swung the glove. But the situation with the majors, this is where it gets delicate. Any time Sheldon Keith gets into any kind of trouble, 
it's like there's this potential for a brush fire type brawl. The others all jump in, and you get this sort of situation. It's very similar to what happened against the Sioux Greyhounds as Mike Feud and Mark Napier have firmly established and tape backs them up. Some thought that accused Keefe of uh, viciously slashing Tim Zafiris, but, and Keefe most certainly did slash him, but there was an elbow before that that precipitated the slash. Yeah, the, uh, it's, 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 it's the, uh, it's the old rule of thumb. Anytime you've got a player that's, uh, that's that significant uh, as Sheldon Keefe, you have to, uh, you have to make sure you protect your player at all costs. He's a, he's a leading goal scorer, not only uh, on this majors team, one of the leading scorers in the whole league. And you've got to you've got to you've got to protect your your uh, your valuable players that are going to put points up on the board for you. And you definitely don't want them in the penalty box. And now, Sir Bob Comsick uh, uh, going through the penalties, and he's uh, he's dedicating or he's uh, he's mentioning the uh, the majors penalties and the front next penalties. And there seems to be some misconducts coming out uh, coming out of the announcements as well. Look at our. Uh, but our clock down here, Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, the amount of penalties I think that he's going to call. I don't know if we have enough room on the screen to put them all up. Now you were uh, uh, Tim. Uh, my uh, Tim, you're uh, taking note there on uh, on who who got what and who was who was penalized for what. And we're going to slowly take you through that as we were writing down vigorously as uh, Bob Comsick was uh, announcing the penalties. And I'm sure that this game's going to be back in uh, back under play uh, very shortly. Uh, the penalty box has been cleared. So I think the suggestion that I made earlier in getting the players away from the penalty box and maybe to their respective rooms is something that uh, referee uh, Mark Hicks has, uh, has decided to do. The referee's still trying to sort out exactly uh, where we're going to go from here. All right, um, Zoe Lutsky and I have been comparing notes on the penalty situation now. Aaron Franson, five minutes fighting, 10-minute misconduct. Jonathan Schill did indeed get tagged for slashing, two-minute slashing, 10-minute misconduct. Uh, we have a 10-minute uh, gross misconduct also leveled against Jonathan Schill, so he gets 22 minutes, and the goalie Curtis Cruikshank of five minutes for fighting. Gerald Moriarty with the five fighting, 10-minute misconduct, and he gets the bonus 10-minute gross misconduct as well, so both Schill and Moriarty getting gross misconduct. Sheldon Keefe, five fighting and a game misconduct, and Sean Cation, five fighting, but also of interest, Walker McDonald is indirectly responsible for the Big brawl in the penalty box. He is not dressed, and Zoe Lutzke, our statistician, has just returned from the penalty box area, and her information gathered from witnesses is that Walker McDonald intervened, interjected into the brawl, insinuated himself into it, not even participating in this game, and uh, that's what uh, at least uh, partially started all the roughhousing in the penalty box as the majors responded predictably. Understandably, uh, you got a player that's not dressed in these... Uh He's stirring up the pot down in the penalty box. No one's happy about that. It'll be interesting to see what sort of rule or what sort of uh, what sort of penalty that the OHL will come down on um, when they review this. So Reg Quinn, the president of the team, Mike Feuda, not at all happy with those penalties. No. Uh, I, I think I think he's got to be the most upset about the penalty handed down to Sheldon Keefe. The game misconduct. Uh, I didn't see how uh, how a game misconduct could be could be given to Sheldon Keefe. Um, Maybe at the most a 10-minute misconduct, but certainly not a game misconduct for throwing well, it, a, for it, throwing a punch with a glove on. Well, I, it may they may have deemed uh, Sheldon Keefe is showing a five-minute major on the board, and Jonathan Schill has incurred a two-minute minor. That's the slash. So those are the penalties that are going to impact the power play situation. So the majors uh, come out of this with one extra major. So uh, Kingston Kingston gains on the board. They will have a three-minute power play. The majors. Penalty is a major, so when the two-minute Kingston part is up, the uh, front next will have three minutes in which they'll be able to score at will, should they be able to score. But it's hard. The game is conduct. If Sheldon Keefe is considered to be a second fight in the ice, that would be a game is conduct. But even more, even more dire from a major's point of view, if uh, he did incur a game is conduct for second fight in the ice, he'll get a two-game suspension as well. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure how that's gonna how that's gonna look. I, the only thing I can think of is that they they thought he was he was the uh, the instrumental in the start of the fight. We see the shots on goal uh, once again. Toronto dominating the uh, dominating the shots on goal with 47 and uh, 35 for Kingston. Well, Reg Quinn apparently says that Sean Griffin started this with a slash to Sheldon Keefe. Reg Quinn talking to our Zoe Lutzky. We saw John, Jonathan Schill was called to the slash. Uh, Griffin was not penalized for slashing. Did Griffin get a slash? No.
The, uh, the penalty box on the uh, Kingston Frontenac side is quite full, and um, the penalty box on the uh, on the major side uh, looks like you have one player down there. Well, we're about to get going, and we're back underway here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The majors with four skaters to the Frontenac's three, as you'll recall way back when, Brett Cloutier still in the penalty box, so the majors on a power play here for a little bit until the penalties to Cloutier and Schill expire, and then the Frontenacs will go in the power play. Right wing for Kenny Karoop. Here's Kenny Karoop with Matt Ellis. Karoop to the line. Ellis goes to the net. Karoop back of the net. Ellis in front of the net as Eric Braff strips Karoop of the puck, clears it to the line, but kept in by Jason Cannon. Very dangerous play there by Jason Cannon there, throwing that across blindly on the blue line, almost picked off by Oliveira. Here's a chance for Zygamanis, working one-on-one -on, -one on Cannon. Zygamanis, wrist shot wide, and Kenny Karoop will take it in the corner. Kenny Karoop leaving it for Mark Popovic. He'll lose it. Here's a chance, wrap around, and nice save by Dwayne Bateman as Mike Oliveira pounced on the loose puck. Majors, Mark Popovic, right wing for Matt Ellis. Ellis on his own, long shoot in, knocked down by Curtis Crookshank. Eric Braff will fire it deep into Toronto territory. Bateman is out of the ice, or out of the net rather, and leaves it for Mark Hines. Here's Hines, left wing for Chris Cava. Chris Cava dumps it into Kingston territory. Crookshank will stop it back of the net. Now he clears it along the boards. Hines will keep it in. Hines in front. Here's a chance in front. Save. And nice save by Curtis Crookshank as Jason Pinizzato in along. Puck fired the length of the ice. Chris Cavill will touch on the icing. Team's now playing four skaters aside. 27 seconds remaining in the penalty to Jonathan Schill. And Sheldon Keefe showing 3.27. Well, Sean Cation, the uh, the lone major major in the uh, in the penalty box. It looks like everybody else has been sent to the showers. Um, now, did you see Sheldon Keith throw a punch other than the initial one with the glove on on John? I don't think Gerald Moore already let him. I no. think I think uh, he got him in. He got he he split the two up as quickly as possible. This is why I can't figure out the uh, the suspension or the or the game misconduct. If indeed that's what uh, uh, referee Hicks is, uh, is is passing down. Well, the majors better hope that's not a game misconduct for second fight on the ice, because that would result in a suspension. And the majors need Sheldon Keefe. It's bad enough that they're without Mike Jefferson due to a six-game suspension for the brawl against Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah, and they're they're heading up to Ottawa, which is a, which is a team that knows how to put the puck in the net. That's for sure. They're going to want to have some, some uh, offensive strength themselves. Here's Brian Simpson, left wing, high rising shot. Yes, the majors will need every healthy body present accounted for to put up a fight against the Ottawa 67s, one of the toughest teams in the OHL, and they're virtually unbeatable at home ice. Brian Kilray just has that team clicking this year. They were strong last year. They're just a first rate defensive team, and they have some pop up front as well. Buck into Toronto territory. The Frontenacs are on the power play. Five skaters to four, 237 remaining in the Keefe Major. And again, we remind you, it is a major, so the majors will have to kill off the whole thing, regardless of whether the Frontenacs score. That's, that's dangerous anytime it's late in the game. We realize there's four goals, uh, four goal difference, but uh, we've seen the majors do it before where they put in uh, three or four goals in a real quick time. Well, I don't think the outcome of this game is in doubt. The Majors with the uh, four-goal lead, but what the Majors have to be concerned about is possible suspensions, not from the league, just, just the minimum stuff. But the uh, second fight on the ice does carry the two games, and gross misconduct, so don't like the sound of that. And the player they have to be concerned about is losing to Sheldon Keith. The very tough games against Ottawa and Barry coming up next weekend. Absolutely. Zygamanis winding it up here. Zygamanis. Taking it deep into Toronto territory. Here's Zygamanis back of the net. Zygamanis has a man draped all over him. That was Mark Popovic. Now the point for Ian Turner. Turner cross ice. Ormond lets go. Knocked down by Bateman. Puck loose back of the net. Jamie Young along the boards. He has a goal this afternoon. Turner and Young. Turner checked by Kenny Krupp. And the puck comes back out to center. Good job by Kenny Krupp there to get the puck out of the, uh, out of the uh, end zone. Puck back into Kingston territory. Majors next game Friday at Ottawa. You can catch that game live here on Rogers Community Television with the Ottawa 67s play-by-play -play team at the Ottawa Civic Arena. We will be carrying it on Rogers Community Television here in Toronto as well. Then the Majors have the home game with the Barry Colts on Saturday, and they get the Mississauga Ice Dogs again on Sunday afternoon. 
That game will be uh, another Rogers live broadcast. Fan 590 participating as well. So Glenn Holdup will be joining me in the broadcast booth for that one. Shot for the point. They score. Eric Graff letting it go off the right point. Deflection. Looks like and the front next score a power play goal. Cut the lead to 6-3. Looks like Zingaman has got a stick on that. A little bit of wood. We see the Jason Cannon uh, fight uh, in the corner for the puck. Actually wins the battle. Sends the puck around to the other side. That gets all the way out to the defenseman, uh, the Kingston defenseman, who just winds it up, tees it up, and Zygamantis is there. Oh, actually, I don't think it was Zygamantis. Might have hit a major player. Eric Kraft letting it go for the right point. Well, number, number 10. Jamie Young was there. Yeah. Jamie Young may get quite a play. Yeah, he may get a second goal here. Let's we'll see what referee Hicks calls on that goal. Well, we don't think Eric Kraft is going to get credit for that goal. Somebody definitely deflected yeah. it if it was a major. Kraft will get credit, obviously. 6-3, the score, 145 remaining of the game, 47 seconds remaining for the Sheldon Keith Major. So the Prime Max have got one goal out of this power play situation, 45 seconds to go in the power play. Jamie Young giving credit for the goal. That's the second of the goal. He's got the only, he's got two goals today, and he's ever scored for the Kingston uh, front next until today. Michael Rivera and Eric Kraft drawing the assist. Uh, Jamie Young second of the game, second of the year. Sigamanis back of the net, looking for Young again. Young shooting, just missing on the glove side. Sigamanis, nice job finding Young. This young kid has potential. Good player from the Thunder Bay Bantams a couple of years ago. Here's a shot from the left wing, knocked down in front, rebound. Bateman, another save, another shot by Zigamanis, and Bateman called on to make about three saves there, and finally he'll get a hold of it with Michael Zigamanis fishing for yet another rebound. Majors don't want to uh, don't want to allow any more goals in. They want to keep this pre keep the pressure up on Kingston, although they're short-handed. Because going into the, going into a game like uh, uh, against Ottawa on Friday night, you want to you want to leave this game on a positive Major note. Game this Saturday, so faceoff will be in the major zone. You see the play there. Initial save by Bateman. A little bit of a rebound comes out. Try to put a short side. The rebound again, and uh, finally the puck gets stuffed in beside the net, and uh, Bateman putting his blocker over it and covering that up for the uh, for the whistle. Sean Cation has a pair of goals for the majors this afternoon. Mark Popovic, Sheldon Keefe, Brent Mulder. Shot right on Dwayne Bateman. The rebound will carry back into Kingston territory. Cation and Popovic putting the majors up 2-0. Brett Cluche scored for Kingston, then Sheldon Keefe. And Ryan Barnes also with a goal. We think that may ultimately be awarded to Mark Popovic. So quite possible that both Popovic and Cation will be credited with two goals when all is said and done. Sheldon Keefe and Brent Mulder with the other goals for the majors, but for the time being, that second possible pop of it goal is Ryan Barnes' goal. Mike Zygamanis over the line. There's the drop to Mike Oliveira. Time winding down. Oliveira throws it in the middle. Guff got a stick on it. Nathan Tennant lets go from the left point. Puck loose at center. Just 20 seconds remaining as Mike Guff barges after it. Jason Cannon will move it back to Chris Cava. Cava ahead for Jason Cannon. Cannon will lift it to center, bouncing puck at the blue line. Mike Guff bumps with Nathan Tennant as time winds down. Just a couple of seconds left. Brock Boucher will touch, and the horn sounds, and the game is indeed over. So the St. Michael's Majors won their third straight game of season high winning streak, extending that season high winning streak. Six three winners over the Kingston Front Knacks, and they also very significantly snap a Seven game a stretch of losses in the head to head series with the Kingston Front Axe. So they improved the record of one and two versus Kingston this year. They're actually perfect against Kingston or one and one with the Front Axe here at Maple Leaf Gardens. And the Majors now two and eight left on against the Front Axe. Real important win today. They move ahead now at Kingston in the overall standings, which has got to make uh, the Majors very happy. Well, that is absolutely a significant, Glenn. The Majors with 16 points now, and they move one point ahead of Kingston for the eighth and final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. Again, the final score, the major six, the front next three. Let's go downstairs to Mike DeJean. And the great weekend continues. Thanks very much, guys, for the St. Michael's Majors putting together their first ever three-game winning streak. The Majors winning on Friday, Saturday, and today, six to three over the Kingston Front Nash. We'll be back with more on Majors Hockey after this break.
Welcome back to Maple Leaf Gardens. Another big victory for the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. A 6-3 final over the Kingston Frontenacs for their third straight win. Let's take it upstairs to Tim and Glenn for a look at at least one of the goals, one of the six goals on the afternoon. Thanks, Mike. And again, the final score is 6-3. Uh, another Donnybrook breaking out the third period, but there were plenty of goals as well as the Majors built up a 6-2 lead. Let's take a look at one of these major goals. Well, it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a great afternoon for the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. And here we see uh, Brent uh, Mulder picking up his first goal of the season on a rebound off the glass. Kenny Karoop with a quick shot. Mulder there to pick up the bouncing puck and slide it underneath Crookshank for his first goal for the season. And the Brent Mulder goal putting the Majors in front by a score of 6-2. to two. As we saw, Jamie Young would get one back for the Kingston Frontenacs on the power play with Sheldon Keefe off on a five-minute major. And I guess what we're still trying to determine at this point, we are looking into it, Exactly what was Sheldon Keefe thrown out of the game for? If it was indeed second fight on the ice, he is looking at a minimum two-game suspension. So we'll, we'll try and determine that for you. But uh, from a major point of view, the Majors obviously hoping it's just a simple thrown out of this game and, and no more. And, and I'm catching uh, the eye of Zoe, our, uh, our statistician. I think she's, uh, she's saying that it's not a suspension. Indeed, it's a, it's just a, it was just a matter of trying to get Sheldon Keefe off for the rest of the game so that another Donnybrook didn't open up. All right, well, well, we'll check into that further. We're going to send things back downstairs to Mike DeJong, and as soon as we can determine that, we'll uh, get it to you forthwith. Mike? Thanks very much, guys. And once again, the Majors out shooting their opponents here, 49-41. to 41. Yesterday, they had a team record 68 shots on goal against Mississauga. Let's take a look at the three stars of this afternoon's contest. No surprise, a couple are defenders. Sean Cation, the blue liner, with two goals and an assist, leading the way. He's the first star. Sheldon Keefe is our second star. <laughs> there we go. Sheldon Keefe, there's another assist for him. He had three on the ice and another off the ice. And defenseman Mark Popovic who had another great afternoon, the 16-year-old uh, rookie, one goal and an assist for the St. Michael's Majors. And let's take a look at our play of the game. No surprise, it involves defenseman Sean Cation, his second goal of the game in the third period at the 7.08 mark. There it is up on the screen. Sheldon Keefe with a nice pass back to Cation at the point. This is on the power play again. Cation just tees it up, blows it by Curtis Crookshank in the Kingston cage. That one would make it 5-2, to two, and the, the Kingston Frontenacs could never get back into it after that, as the Majors would go on to win it 6-3. to three. As mentioned, it's their third consecutive win this weekend. Three wins in three days. Very good work this weekend for Mike Feuda's charges. So it's on now to the Ottawa area, the Ottawa, the nation's capital for a game against the Ottawa 67s next Friday night. We'll have that one for you here on Majors Hockey. Be sure to tune in as the Majors have a tough task as they try to extend their winning streak to four games. The Majors beat the Kingston Frontenacs 6-3 this afternoon at Maple Leaf Gardens. For Tim Haffey and Glenn Lowe's, I'm Mike DeJong. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Majors Hockey.